It's time for Twig this week in Google. We celebrate three years in the East Side Studio with a great show. Stacey Higginbotham and Jeff Jarvis are here. We're going to talk about Google turning off the light on my nest, the ballad of Dev Null, the strange connection between Media Lab and Jeffrey Epstein, and deep fakes you won't believe your eyes. At least you shouldn't. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 522. Recorded Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. The Corgi Parade. This Week in Google is brought to you by Monday.com. Monday.com helps teams manage work and meet deadlines while building a culture of transparency. Manage all your core business activities in one place. Learn more at monday.com slash twig. And by Capterra. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Visit Capterra's free website at capterra.com slash twig. It's time for Twig this week in Google. Stacy Higginbotham is here from Stacy on IoT in the IoT podcast. Hello, Stacy. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Professor Jeffrey Jarvis, the Leonard Town Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Greg Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York, is also here. Buzzmachine.com. Hey. And he's just down the road a piece from Bedminster. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I know when, the, when there's a disturbance in the force. <laughs> Did you see Tim Cook's helicopter come in a couple of days oh, ago? Oh, no. Uh -oh. Yeah, he had dinner. The funny Ish. thing about Tim Cook... This is actually a good a good CEO move. He went had uh, had uh, dinner with the president at the golf course and explained to him that tariffs would hurt Apple because their number one competitor Samsung doesn't have to pay them, but Apple would starting September first on uh, a few of their products and by December fifteenth on all of their products. And the president said, "Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I'll think about it." Never mind. <laughs> I'll think about it. Gun control, never mind. Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I'll think about it may not mean anything. It may yeah, actually, who knows? That may, that, we don't know what that means. So did you watch the show Borgen, or as they would say it there, Boon? Boon? No, what is Boon? What? No, what? It, it, is, it is a magnificent show about um, a woman who becomes the, the Staatsminister, the Prime Minister of Denmark. Ah. I want to start a popular movement to get a sequel on just to have her deal with Trump. Oh. Brilliant. It's a brilliant show. <sighs> you know, Denmark. To, to, by the way, there is some strategic benefit to buying Greenland. Well, <laughs> if it were for sale. Yeah, well, everything's for sale if you offer the right price. 20 years from now, it's going to be prime farmland. Yeah, there's one <laughs> good all reason. It's going to be great. So you may note, if you're watching the video, that there are a surprisingly large number of uneaten sweets in front of me. And Leo can't eat them. And there is the number three for the 13th birthday of Stacy's daughter. <laughs> no, this is the technically the third, exactly when we moved in, right? Is that right? Uh, the third anniversary of our move into the East Side Studios three years ago. Which, if my calculations are correct, means we have seven more years on the lease. <laughs> You're like Howard Stern <laughs> counting down. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're celebrating. We're having a little party. You can now ignore all those sweets. But you can't ignore that sign in front of me. I just uh, thank you, by the way, to uh, uh, Jason Howell for filling in for me last week. Stacy's trying to read the sign. Uh, I'm like, it's a podcast? I, that's what it says. It's a podcast. Okay. I was at a big podcast, the big podcast convention in the U.S. in Orlando all week long. Unfortunately, named podcast movement, but uh, <laughs> uh, it was a fine movement, and uh, and uh, one of the things that people were saying is you can you really should call it a podcast. I fifteen years ago at the first podcast expo, I I beseeched my fellow podcasters, let's please let's not use Apple's trademark in this name. It won't always be on an iPod. Someday you'll be able to get shows elsewhere. Somebody will invent something like YouTube. Uh, I think I was right, but boy, nobody took up my suggestion of Netcast at all. Uh, in fact, one of the things I kind of am happy about, and I apparently, uh, according to uh, 
I think it was the, the Daily News, I can thank um, Conan O'Brien for this. Everybody knows what podcasts are now. So I can say I'm a podcaster and people don't go, what, um, what is that? And we can call our shows, not netcasts, because no one knows what that is. If I say I'm a so netcaster. Are you, are you changing your lead yeah, in? Even the lead in this are. show will now say, instead oh. of netcasts you love from people you trust, podcasts you love. Holy Hannah Croy. Uh, I, feel I like know. I've given oh. in. A thousand episodes okay. later. Thanks to Team Coco, we now know. Podcasts exist. So it's a podcast. Stupid. I feel so relieved. Even after, though after. you can listen to it on your Echo. Is that a podcast? You can watch it on YouTube. Is that a podcast? You can even, in some cases, listen to podcasts on the radio. Is that a podcast? <laughs> I, no, I think know. Dave Weiner, an inventor of this, doesn't like the term either, right? No one likes it. In fact, Apple at one point was uh, was gonna was suing podcasts. Companies with the word pod in their name, including podcasts. Yeah, the cover of Variety, Conan O'Brien, The Podcast Revolution. Wait, this is a story from, like, recently? Today. Oh. You're kidding me. It's on the cover of Variety magazine. Oh. It says, <laughs> and other top hosts, though. You're a top host, uh, aren't you? I don't know. Audio boom. Audio's back, baby. Audio boom. I like I like podcasts like the phrase I like the word podcast. I do. It's humble. Yeah. It's humble and it's it's nicer than like radio show, which is basically what this is. I mean Yeah, it's a radio show. It's a well, there was a guy, it's so funny because what goes around comes around. Uh from Edison Research, Tom's a great guy, very smart guy, was talking about his research. And even he at the end of his talk, the keynote at uh, one of the keynotes at this event, the podcast movement, uh said it's a show which is actually accurate it's just a show yeah you know mm -hmm. it's it's a show that doesn't come through an antenna <laughs> but it's still a show and so anyway it's a show it's a radio show i think you're right and we do video so we're kind of like a radio a tv show maybe you should call it a pictures. netcast because it's gonna come over the internet that's why i wanted to call it an, I, there was two reasons <laughs> It was on the internet. That's how we distributed she it. She baited you. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it worked. It worked. As long as you it don't did. call it wow. a vlog. It's not a I, vlog. I never liked vlog. vlog. I hate blog. I hate vlog. Yeah, I vlog and vlog are terrible names. The vlog of course, I also, have an email. So. Jeff.blog. I will, I will say no, I one of my favorites is, what is that? Um, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Um, oh, a blog. What's his name? Uh, Dr. Evil. Dr. Horribles. Dr. Dr. Horrible. Dr. Horrible. Musical. I can't Something. remember. Something. He call he talks about his vlog, yeah. right? Yeah. It, or he may even call it like a video blog. God I only it was a blog. who knows. It was a blog. Dr. Horrible sing along blog, That's it was called. There it is. Uh, I need to show that to my daughter. Oh yes. Yeah. That now is lost in the mists of time too, by the way. That was the other thing I realized when I went to this podcast thing. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what the you know, the early days of podcasting might as well be Abe Lincoln. It's it's like it's complete. These young people have no, you know they don't know any of this stuff. Adam Curry, who's that? They don't know any of this stuff. So it's fine. I don't mind. I don't care. I'm happy. We like our little show, don't we? Whatever you want to call it, we're glad you're here. We're going to talk today about Google and Facebook and media and news and all of that stuff because that's what we do on this show. And and audio is okay. Audio uh, the great. Telegraph. The te Telegraph had a story this week that the end of audiobook snobbery as scientists find reading and listening activate the same parts of the brain. I've been saying that also because I used to do the Audible ads and I'd say I read a new book and people say, "Oh, you Leo, you didn't read it. You listened to it." I said it's the same words. I hate that when when the on the audiobook they say, "Well, in this audiobook, no, it's yeah. still a book." <laughs> yeah, they can say they can call book. it a book. Yeah, yeah. I don't like so, I don't like so, audiobooks. They're too slow. You can speed them up. No, you, you know. speed them up. No problem at all. You speed them yeah, up. Yeah, I know. Real easy. But and it sounds okay after a while. Then I have to. But then I have to work harder. When I read a book, I don't feel like I'm working. I'm the only person on earth who can speed up. I feel like I'm working oh my gosh, Jeff, when I read a book. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading. I mean, I'm so working. I never listened to the daily, and I happened to have, turn it on today. I was playing with my Android audio because I got new. You mean with mm -hmm. Michael Barbara? And he speaks. He talks so slowly. Slow. Yes. This Lee. is Michael Barbara. 
we've done the, the Bob and Ray routine on the show before. But yes, it's the, the slow talkers. Slow talkers of America. That's, so oh. so um, I was also reading some, some um, papers from a, a, a 2013 paper from the journal Book History talked about uh, uh, the book after Edison. I know everyone thought that it was going to be going to be uh, everything was going to be recorded. And the New York Times uh, talked about how it was bottled speech. Oh, my gosh. It's bottled up for future use. Oh, my gosh. Audiences would be able to purchase bottled orations and bottled sermons <laughs> sold in quart bottles for 50 cents a piece. It's a bottle cast. Now we have the and name the of taste would have a well-stocked oratorical cellar. I do. It's on my uh, we'll be able to entertain guests with a dry cellar Mark phone. Twain. I wish we had Mark Twain's actual voice. So that is there. It is an interesting yeah. watershed, isn't it? James McWhorter yeah. talks about how how everything changed with Edison's recording. It's the first time a human voice had been recorded. We know what Edison sounded like, but nobody prior. Right. And we don't know what Lincoln sounded like. We, we've heard descriptions. We don't know what he sounded like. Uh, by the way, Stacey, you'll be happy to know this was from uh, the Edison Research Talk uh, at Podcast Movement. Uh, he compared people who have been listening to podcasts for a long time, he calls them veterans, with people who are just new to podcasting. He called them rookies. 30% of rookies listen to podcasts at a higher speed than nominal. Only 20, that makes sense. Only 20% of the old timers do. Have you tried it, Stacey? Oh, yeah, I listen to, I mean, I listen at 1.5. I mean, it depends on who's speaking, too. Okay. Like, I'm Have you a tried books speaker. that way? I, I, it's amazing I how you get really used fast. to it. I, I don't. Could, I mean, I, like. Here's why I don't like it. We'll get people visiting. We have some nice visitors in studio today. Who, Hi, have, visitors. who have never listened to this show uh, at normal speed. Najee, Ramon, and <gasps> Dana. And they think oh, we're being they must be really so sad with now. us. They think we sound drunk. <laughs> they think you all sound like Nancy Pelosi. What's wrong with you? <laughs> we're all talking like this. Today. Well, Jeff can apparently speed up quite a bit. I don't think I can. Maybe it's because I'm from the South. You, you, yeah, you got the yowl. Well, talk. people, people in the South, they think I speak fast. very quickly. Are you a New Yorker? Why are you talking so fast, Stacy? You also have fewer exactly. syllables in your words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm I have to go through actual thought here to slow down. If you, you mean, got me at normal speed, you mean I'm you're not really thinking fast. when you're talking at normal speed? No, 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 no. I have to think <laughs> about slowing down. A oh, 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 I, you force yourself. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Oh, I have that same exact problem. In fact, yeah. the only time I've ever recorded an audiobook, Aud uh, Audible let me come in and record a short fairy tale. Uh, I don't want. Only one. I'm gonna, but I, that's in my future because I would love okay, to do yeah. audio. Yeah, you should do lots of them. Yeah, I would love to, but uh, I don't have time right now. But the one note I kept getting from the producer, who's sitting over your shoulder, is slow down, slow down, slow down. You're speeding up. Slow down. Yep, yep. Because I, I try to get. It's you, you and me are. I think are the same, Jeff. We're trying to get all our words out. You know, the other thing you could do is you could volunteer for Learning Ally, formerly known as Recording for the Blind and Dyslexic. Oh, I would do that, actually. Oh, it's a very good cause. I did that cause. once. Did you? My, my mom's aunt or cousin, I can't remember, did it. And so she had me go in and read at one point, long, long time ago. But yes, I, I too would like to do like audio work. That was very cool. I used to be on the board. You could put it in a cork bottle. Yes. Yes, my oratorical bottle. Stacey. bottle. <laughs> Um, oratorial uh, oratorial bottle there we go uh, I th yeah I, I I love reading out loud I did it to my kids the, if, this is why I think audiobooks work because wasn't the first book you ever read read to you by your parent yeah of course that's how we first read is uh, we were read to and I love the idea that it changes the, the definition of literacy oh that's yeah. true too anybody can listen to a book yeah. yes yeah okay yeah. so are we going to we should talk about Google I actually have thoughts. Because <laughs> Stacy wants to go make some sticky rice. Mango. Some sticky, sticky rice. rice. Mango sticky rice. Ooh. And apple crisp. <laughs> oh, man. I know. Okay, I made this well, maple caramel sauce. So I'll, delicious. I have a Google story, but I don't. I bet it's not the one you want to talk about, but I'm going to mention it. Because I Do put it. these uh, Nest cameras up. There's two in our studio, and then I have around our house, so I have Nest cameras. 
All of a sudden, I have a big bright green light on all of them. <laughs> it, it nest. I had them all turned off. Uh, Google has decided for privacy reasons that all Nest camera lights now must be on. You cannot turn them off. Yep. And I I'm okay with this. Oh. I guess, yeah, because, um, uh, but, but, but my, I think my security cameras. I, I don't want bad guys to know they're on camera. I don't know That's, what. Yeah, I don't so want them to know where the camera the is, thread. so they can disconnect it. Well, if your camera can be disconnected that easily, well, then, all cameras can. You know, it's you just take scissors yeah. to them. I'm like, or, so you know what they do in the we'll in the movies? They take a spray paint and they spray in the lens. But you can see most of the cameras anyway if you're looking for them, mm -hmm. right? Unless you're mm -hmm. actively hiding them and the green light gives them away. I'm not. I mean, the flip side is, as someone who thinks about privacy and things like that, and there's still tons of spy cameras, so this doesn't solve that problem. But Google's trying as an industry, a player in the industry to say, hey, here's a best practice. It's also because Congress sent them that lovely letter saying, right. hey, what about that secret microphone you had in your products and what other privacy violating things? So Google's like, well, okay, here. I get it. it. I get it. Um, so in settings for Nest cameras, this should have been the change log, but, I, but I, I'm leading with it because it bugs the hell out of me. In settings for Nest cameras and Nest Hello, <laughs> you can no longer turn off the status light. You can dim it, but it doesn't get very dim. And it's bright green. So especially at night, those security cameras, they pop out at you. You know where they are. So now some people will put tape over their camera lens or their laptop. Some will put it over the indicator light on I the camera. I guess I could do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That was actually, so I will say when Eero launched that feature, and I don't know if they're still an advertiser or not, but when they launched that feature where it dimmed the little LED on the... Oh, it was great. Uh, I turned them I was off. Like, thank you. Yeah. Who, everything that has LEDs, you should be able to turn the lights off because they're well, often in bedrooms. Well... Uh, Who's put it? You don't put your IP camera in your bedroom. No, but a beacon. You're... But I have an Eero beacon near our bedroom, okay. and I don't want that light. Yeah. Well, and that that makes sense. And I turn off all the lights, or I stick things over them, tape. Yeah, you blah, end up blah, blah, taping blah. over it, which is fine. But it's yeah. it's kind of ugly. It should be. I mean, it's a reasonable thing to put in a software setting. But anyway, all right. That's just my pet peeve of the week. Okay. So you have it off while your we're chest, talking you about better? it, yes, I do. We can talk about the Google Nest Home migration, which is coming rapidly it's August happening 31st happening kind of as we speak isn't it well yes so it's an option now that you can do it um kevin actually did it and i put a link in the show notes to kevin doing it would you give, you give us the background so what if you bought a nest device it used so to back, works with yeah. nest was the thing right yes so back in may google said hey we're gonna kill our works with nest program and instead of Nest having its own, all Nest devices work through the Nest app and Nest kind of is its own, I call it a brain. It's its own brain. Google has decided Google Home is now going to be the brains for Nest. So all the commands that Nest devices could usually like send out to the internet and do, now all that's going to go through the Google Home devices. And Google did this to kind of lock down its ecosystem, make it a little less confusing. It makes a lot of sense, but people were really upset because if your Nest thermostat, for example, if you have like an IFT setting where when my Nest reaches, I don't know, 77 degrees, turn on a fan. Now your Nest can't tell that to IFT. If it, you would have your Google Home say that to IFT. Is that an via. IFT issue? Well, no, 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 that's how this program is designed to work now. So oh. basically it cuts down on the number of integrations that Google has to worry about and manage, like all these third parties with your data. Oh, so you'd so rather that, do, you'd prefer to do it directly. I, let me, I, I don't because There's I'm going to have to rebuild to having, everything. Well, that's one, you have to redo everything. But isn't there but, a convenience to having a third party like Nest, uh, like if this and that, because you can do more. Yeah, well. You can have cross-platform integrations. Yes, and you can still have that. It's just going to Google gets more control over who gets access to certain triggers uh, in the Nest privacy devices. Privacy thing again. It's both privacy. It's also data security. It's it's preparation for the coming lockdown. It's clear that Google thinks that people are going to that Congress and regulators are going to be paying attention to this, and also it's kind of a best practice. I mean, being able to really easily see who's got access to your data, uh, 
makes a lot of sense. And I'm talking about as a company who Completely provides agree. access to like consumer data. Completely agree. Yeah. And it's also so, it's also harder nowadays to make your own ift uh, triggers. Well, that's that's, that's an ift thing. combination of ift that's, and that's and changing the their third business parties. models. Yeah. 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 So there, yeah, there's a lot happening here. If did send out a thing saying, hey, if you have Nest integrations that you like, do not sign over. And this is the thing. Don't change over to a Google account from your Nest account unless you are really prepared to move forward. There is no going back. So that's one thing you need to know. This is going to break your integrations. So you're going to have to redo like the things with Madam A, your Amazon Echo. Um, if if doesn't have an integration right now, so you can't do anything with that. So, and it's also going to break some of like the other direct works with Nest integrations, like with Hue Lights and that sort of thing. So you're going to have to redo a lot of stuff. In case you haven't noticed, Stacy is an IoT expert. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, she is no, no. And, she and is I play the, one on the, netcast. the IoT, IoT expert. and has a strangely elaborate IoT setup at home. Have you migrated most of that stuff that you had in Austin to Seattle? I haven't. This is like my own personal like guilt is I don't <laughs> need a lot of it. I don't want this a is, lot of it's it. It's so funny that you say that because I put in Nest thermostats and all that stuff and then I moved and it, they sat in a box. <laughs> I never, I just, it's like, yeah. And same thing with Hue lights. I mean, I have, I don't even have, like, and there's a lot of things in my house I don't have. Like, I don't have a doorbell at all. What? <laughs> what? I know. I'm like, what oh, happens on Halloween? Halloween? Doesn't want anybody coming over. Wow, that's a really. So I was like, oh, I should get a ring and just put it out there. But I'm like, oh, you know, in the last two months, people have knocked. I've got a dog. She barks. I know when people are at the door. Well, you know, and I have a ring, but I've been thinking that since I have so many Nest things now and Google Assistants. The it, Nest Hello doorbell is an excellent doorbell. Is it good? Should I get a hello instead? I'd have to take the ring off. See, this is the whole problem with this whole IoT thing. And if I moved, I'm not going to bring all that with me. I'm just gonna... Oh, yeah. I left I left a huge chunk of my stuff. But yes, You can actually, you say... open your blinds with a string now? Well, yeah. Yeah, I do. Wow. Now, well, you're that's renting. Hard. That's rough. You're renting. I am renting. So there is a good reason for that. Maybe when you buy, you will revert. When I buy, I will... I, the first thing I'm going to do is install Lutron switches everywhere. But I bet you, um, Andrew, your oh. husband is very happy right now. <laughs> He's actually a little frustrated because we don't have, it's an old house. So we have like, we don't you have, you have, to, we have the weirdest You have lights. to turn a knob to get your faucet to come yeah, on I, like a I, savage? I, 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 I have we this sitcom have vision of Stacy sitting there telling the shades to go up and getting madder and madder and madder and screaming, shades up, shades up. <laughs> And then she remembers. Andrew goes over. I'm goes, not. I'm not you, Jeff. I don't get that angry about things. I'm like, I have a pretty high threshold about that stuff. But yes, I. She used to, folks, wave at her kitchen faucet, and if water would just come out of it. Oh, I touched. The, I, I missed my touch faucet like nobody's business. I actually was like, I was ready to pay five hundred dollars and install it in my rental house. Did you have the one that you could touch a button? And it would, in the, like, would say two cups exactly would come out. Yeah, um, I could I could tell Madam A to dispense two cups. <gasps> dispense Whoa. two cups of water into my hand, Madam A. <laughs> and you could program it to do that like, is that is Christ like. That is awesome. like <laughs> let there be water. It, it didn't turn it into wine. Oh well, <laughs> it's just it's but still you can water. Walk on that's, it. that's that's a mere that's matter just, of that's a mere matter of configuration. All yes. you have to, have to do is, is have a tube going into into your. Do you tell Madame what temperature it should be? Um, I did not have that setting. You can do it so it's warmer or cooler Please. if you have the right. Madame A, I would love a couple of cups of cool water to gush as, forth. Madame A, as cool as a morning spring. <laughs> That's how cool I would like it to the be. The nice thing is you probably could stick all those extra words in and she just go, yeah, here's some cold water. Yeah, I would <laughs> yeah, that's, I just learned somebody, I did a podcast with someone, it hasn't been released yet, but he was like, he was talking about his kid interacts with Madame A, and she just says, Madame A weather. Yeah. And I'm like, that works? Of course I'm it works. Like, it's better. Madame A. Oh, it's so much better. What will the weather she, be weather. today? Yes. 
especially like, if you're very, yeah if you're very curt with her it works much yes, better yes cuz she has to figure out what all those extra words yes. are you humans are so verbose She's a robot can i re, can i, I have you do it at one and a half x yeah by the way yeah, that, voice, never occurred to me. that voice appearing from nowhere i should explain <laughs> is Karsten, our producer Karsten Bonnie. uh cuz i realize if you're watching video you're seeing nobody's mouth move when he talks so that's why I'm I, working on making Leo's voice. Mouth <laughs> I think talk. we we need a Karsten puppet. <laughs> I'll just go and, on. and Jeff can make I'll it talk. Just, that would I'll be just awesome. Move my hand. Oh, so good. This, yeah, this is my Karsten puppet. Are you still in touch with the guys who did Dev? No, we could just have me like Karsten. Put me in the suit. We've uh, mentioned this before, but in case you forgot, used to be my handler when I was the robot character. On MSNBC's The Site, <laughs> Dev No, Karsten was the guy. We took two people, actually took three if you include me, to do it. And uh, what part of me did you, you did my eyebrows, right? I did your hair and your eyebrows yeah. and uh, all the cameras and lights. <laughs> That's how he got this job, kids. So yes. make sure you stay in school. Stay in, stay in. <laughs> Put that Harvard degree to work. Do we have wow. any pictures of Dev Null to put up? Oh, I could do that, sure. Yeah. I got yeah, many pictures. We can even play a little clip if you or really video. want. Video. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Soledad. Well, I want to see Didn't Carson's I play that bit recently? Work. Soledad O'Brien was talking about Dev the other day. Really? Uh, yeah. And Someone embarrassed her with it. Yeah, and she played a clip of it. Um, on what? How did she play it? On Twitter? Uh, well, no, the, he played her. Played it. Uh, oh. This is from 1997. Uncle Leo. And let me turn up the uh, sound so you can hear it on the site. Your attention, please. Prepare to enter the site. I gave this show great reviews. Now, Did you? Thank you. From San Francisco, yes. Soledad O'Brien. That sounds like you, Karsten. Hello, and welcome to the site for Tuesday, June 10th. These stories making high-tech news today. And now... At that point in the show where we turn to Dev. Would that be the high point or the <laughs> low point? I mean, where exactly? What oh, point you're exactly? leaving it so open for me. I can't I even just, go there. I like, to, I like to give you the opportunity to slam. So she's staring not at a strangely attractive guy with purple hair, but at a green dot on the wall. I am in another room on the other side of the studio surrounded by sound blankets, so it's sweltering hot. Karsten and uh, Christine are manipulating my hair and eyebrows, and I'm talking in a funny voice, wearing a rubber suit, like a wetsuit with dots taped to it. It, it was sensors. Dots. Sensors. It was All of this sensors. because you have a voice. Was, you have a face for radio. They, this was dots. because uh, the network decided I should not be on TV. Yes. And they, they said, well. Because they originally, my was promised, you know, managing editor of the show and all that, and regular spot every week and every day it was daily, uh, and then they decided, no, we don't want you on TV. So, here, wear this rubber suit. <laughs> that is so harsh. So uh, you know, network television. But so far, you have and yet to take me up on this. You're so polite. Soledad so hated me. Mm. She hated me. Mm. You just make me crazy. Mm. Hey, I got a great bit for you. This is uh, this hey. is a great. <laughs> you always say that. Hey. 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 <laughs> Let's get your attention. Hey, <laughs> hey, I know you're not exactly thrilled to be here, so I'm just trying to get your attention. I'm hey. thrilled to be here. Oh, no, yeah, here. right. Yeah, sure. On my you're own here. volition. Kind you're of. <laughs> kind of. She sees her career flashing before her eyes. <laughs> this was, uh, that was basically it. Uh, you get the, you get the, uh, the, the tension. <laughs> it See, wasn't exactly moonlighting. Required. It wasn't exactly uh, Sybil Shepard and uh, Bruce Willis. It was, you know. Every time like, you're out of town. I've been on that show, you know. Every time you're out of town. Uh, you should be. You should be Dev Null. I should just to the show like this Leo. in a virtual. Well, uh, okay, Boy, we're really digressing, but I will digress. There's a guy uh, named Greg Panos who worked at uh, the company that did this character in, in 1997. This was state of the art. This you couldn't yeah. do this because you I don't could know do. Why you'd want to? But that's another <laughs> right? question. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> nobody asked that question. You could do it uh, after the fact in rendering. But you couldn't do it in real right, time. We were doing this yeah. live in real time. And so it took a half million dollar Silicon Graphics Onyx workstation running nice. special. Silicon Graphics. Remember them, SGI? SGI. Yeah, it wow. was purple. It was a beautiful. I wish I had that SGI. Although oh, it has yes. a tenth of the power in my smartphone. But uh, it was running software from a company called Protozoa. And Panos was an expert in all this 3D stuff. I met him maybe five or six years ago in the men's room at uh, a Webby Awards, 
That was probably extraneous information. And he said, you know, we could do what we did with that SGI today with a mo any modern PC. We were just about to uh, build uh, our studios. And I said, Greg, it would be really cool if we could do some sort of thing. Instead of having Jeff Jarvis in a TV screen and Stacy in a TV screen as they are today. Oh, we could be dev no. We could no. animate you without wearing a suit with a standard PC Scan your. It's the, actually today. You could have the, my Bitmoji. Yeah, be like a Bitmoji or a Memoji for Apple. You, you and Stacy, you and I could be deep fakes. Yeah, you could do that with your Note 10 now. We could do it with a smartphone. So I and I thought it'd be really cool to do it, so that you'd be actually sitting at the table in roughly equivalent 3D renderings of yourselves. But you know what? This works. Well, there are fine. pictures of you in the rubber suit. Oh, I don't know, no, Carson. Did no, you take no. any pictures? I don't want to see those. It's pretty funny. It's like a wetsuit. Basically, it is a wetsuit. Um, and I also, but I also have a headband on. And how did they do my, how did they lip sync my mouth? There was no camera on it me, right? It was just, it was just, just sound. Just sound. That yeah. you're, you just flapped. Which is why the, the lip sync the, isn't very yeah. good. If you, if you look at it, it's actually pretty, yeah. pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty, just volume. I talked about like wet hands to me, but I guess that some of the, uh, content providers weren't so thrilled about it. It's the voice that's very irritating. Yeah. That was my creation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. All you. I just didn't want anybody to think it was me, honestly. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it could have been any number of things. I should have made him like weirdly British or something. Or, oh, now I you can also Eastern just European. make us into, uh, into deep fakes. Yeah. Did you well, that would the, basically be uh, we'll, Times. We're, we'll save that fake for video? the end of the show. We're saving that. Well, there, okay, we'll keep that there. Okay. Is so that the thing war. you're saving? I'm, that's the thing I'm saving for the end of the show. Because we weren't able to show it last week. Yes. Because well, we didn't want to get taken down on YouTube. Yes. So well, that's that's just but, we'll, but then, we'll get there. We'll get, you'll get wait, there. You wait, Laura. We'll so there. so but, I but, have some more more Google Home devices if we want to talk yes. about those. Cause get us back on track. Please. It's that they, or they, Bedminster, one or the other. So you go they, ahead. They've added some other stuff, which is Karsten. I may be back to the 3A. So. Uh, CNET published a story about the features in the Google. Oh, I'm going to screw this up. Nest Max. Mini. Max. No. Well, okay. So there's that one. There's okay. the news that there's going to be a, a Nest Mini. So with a built-in kind of wall mount, better sound, and an aux jack, which actually is great. The aux jack. That Did is, you mount that any of your or or of your talking things? I, my wife doesn't like it when I mount things, so I pretty much don't. <laughs> It's one of the most popular questions. I'm going to go right over that and just. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of the most popular questions we get at the show. She says is, it hurts the I woodwork. What are you thinking? <laughs> so, so there's Origin makes some lovely devices if you want to like ceiling or wall mount a Google or an Echo device. Um, anyway. I'm but sorry. I really threw you. I apologize. I really apologize. <laughs> the Google Max apparently is going to have the Soli chip in it, which means what? I can use gesture oh. there. Oh, so this means is the I new don't have to buy a four. This is the new thing coming in the Pixel Four. Soli no, no, is no. what? So the, the Google Nest Max. No, I know. I'm saying that it, oh, okay. we, it was prior previously announced in this in, or leaked in the Pixel Four phone, which is coming out in a month or two. But you're saying they're going to put the same array. And what is it? It's a 3D sensing camera. Yeah, so CNET put a story out today. So they're saying it's going, the 10-inch display is going to have, hold on, I'm going to go through there. This is really Yaha. interesting news. Nest Cam, facial recognition, and it's supposed to be able to follow you um, around. <sighs> it's kind of like the, uh, the Facebook-y thing, yeah. portal. Um, and then it's also... So Going to have gesture control. Let me play the YouTube video that Google put out of. See now, now that the boss is back, he can play them. Well, I'm yeah. I mean, so see, she's doing gestures. So this isn't actually a rumor. This is Google uh, already announced right. these features in the Pixel Four, so that you can use gestures because uh, it's a it's a 3D sensing camera, right? But what could you do with it so it could follow you around with a Max as you're making so phone you can calls. stop music playback. Oh, by gesture. saying no. Okay, good. No, well, no, you're like... Yeah, yeah, by waving at no. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you don't have to say it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so now I'm like, hey, hey, I'm going to 
try this out so I still get Soli and I can buy the Pixel 3a, which I thought Karsten would appreciate. So the Soli is part you can, of. Uh, you can wait the, until the the four comes out though, just just in case. I really want this Although new you Home want it Max. Before, you want it? You want to give the. Don't you want to give the two to... to today your, to is today. my child's birthday. Yeah, I have two. to get rid of my... Oh. Oh. I told her she had to be patient. She's I, patient. But I, I completely agree with you. I don't want to gesture to my phone, but I do want to gesture to a, a, yeah. a static yeah. device. Or, whatever. Right. or that's, that's have it know I where so I am. Uh, this. this is a much better place for Soli, frankly. Did, 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 did they say when this is going to be? Uh, this is September. This comes out in September. Roughly, so you um, know what? Google's going to do one ninth? announcement with all of this stuff, right? Probably, right? Yeah, I think, is it the 9th? Did I make that up? Of Someone. what? September? Yeah, so the 10th September? is when Apple's expected to announce its new iPhone. So the 9th would be a very interesting day to announce it. That's a Monday. That would be very mm. interesting. That would be really interesting. Well, maybe it's, it's not. Maybe also I a double-edged sword day. because you only get one day in your news cycle. Oh, no. The, so the Nest Hub Max will hit stores on September 9th. Oh. It'll, it's going to be $229. Is that it? That's it. This is it. Yeah. September 9th. I want it. I already signed up for the pre, you know, on the website, but, you know, will you get an email? What does that mean? Oh, maybe they'll give me money off my uh, Pixel thingy. I wish, you know, does Google do the thing where if I turn in another one of their devices, I get, like, yeah, Amazon? Yeah, it's hardly You get, them. like, 35 cents. Samsung does it, yeah, but, yeah. Amazon gives you, like, 10 bucks for old dots right. and stuff like that. So this comes out of ATAP, the Advanced Technology Group and Projects Group at uh, Google, They've been working this. Remember Project Era that, that you were so disappointed about the modular phone that mm -hmm. they abandoned. Uh, Tango mm -hmm. was also out of that. It's a radar chip, the Soli chip. So it's a single chip solution. It's radar. I'm really curious. Yeah, it's using sixty gigahertz. So it's not doing what Apple's array does, which is paint red dots in infrared dots on my face. No, that's it how it's do that. face and ID it's not works. using time of flight. It's using. Okay. Because that's what's uh, on the uses, new Note 10 is a time of flight sensor. Yeah, think of this as radar, or yeah, think of this as sonar with radio waves as so opposed I'm to sound waves. The, sorry, the Google mm -hmm. Nest Hub Max now on the Google Store is that was doing everything you're saying it's doing. Sure. Google, oh, did you finish your question? Or oh, I turned on my i. My she device. responded. Responded. Stop. Google, stop. John Legend woke up. Okay, Google, stop. Um, so, is, so, Jeff, all there of is you, the, stop. let me answer your question before you ask it. There is the Google <laughs> Nest Home Max. Right. The Google Home Max that is available now that does not do this. The Google Nest the Hub, Hub Max. Max that is coming out. I have the Home Hub, which is the, the original Hub, little yes. one, and I love... But this does not have a camera at all. One of the reasons it's in my bedroom. It's just basically a slideshow that I could talk to. But it's like I, yesterday I said, set a weekday alarm for 7.30 a.m. And every, I mean, there's little things like that. They're just so useful. Oh, yeah. I, I love really having like it. So I, I won't put it in the bedroom because of that. But I think of the kitchen, that's a perfect kitchen device. And it's a bigger screen so you could watch stuff on it. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin I know, watches lots of stuff. Every now and then... My daughter will come in. I only have the Google one in my office because no one in my family uses Google when Madam A is available. Yeah, but I'm thinking of shifting everything to Google. I have both, but I think that's why I was thinking maybe I should replace the Ring, which works better with uh, Echo. And I will say the the doorbell, the Hello, Hello. doorbell Hello. is awesome okay. on when because you can set it up so when someone rings your doorbell, yeah. it just pops up on that screen. That's it. Okay. And it's it's That's pretty what handy. I want. So I'm thinking, and this is of course what Google's hoping we will all think. Maybe it's time to become an all Google home. Yes, I wish I wish I could be all one or all the other. My my brain would like that. But. Doesn't doesn't everything? I mean, the Lutrons would work with Google or no? You have no, to have everything Echo for works. a lot. It all works with Amazon. No, no, Lutron works with uh, okay. both. Okay. Hue lights work with both. Okay. Almost everything. June oven does not work with Google. I. Wait a minute. Well, you command your toaster oven with your Amazon Echo? You don't. Yeah, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. What, why would you not do that? I didn't know I could, to be honest. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> it's really <laughs> handy. Wow. Okay, so there you go. There's one thing I can't use with a all Googled house. 
But yeah, that's but crazy. You're apparently the, not doing it anyway. So the, <laughs> the irony of it is the June oven's running Android. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying to see if they maybe they have it now. Uh -huh. So here is the video. I think this is two or three years old of Project Soli. I've forgotten. We saw this. We talked about it. Oh, yeah. Look at the that's size of the know, chip. Right? Remember? Yeah, I remember you were very excited, Stacy. Look at the size of this original chip. The idea is it's bouncing radar waves off of this hand. And I don't know what it's doing. It's Oh, so now gestures, it can interpret. That's the that's the Karsten puppet gesture. It's almost like a wave sh a waveform that it can interpret like sound. So yeah, you can see exactly the value of it. You can see how, oh, well, I can I understand sound waves. This is just another kind of wave. Yep. Very interesting. Oh, I'm excited. I want to get this Good. thing. Yeah. And then I guess uh, I have to get more Nest cameras, a Hello Doorbell. What else is it? The in Nest there? by Yale Lock. Nest Yale by, by Nest Yale. Lock. See, yes. I really have misgivings, especially we just learned now there's a new Bluetooth attack called Knob that makes Bluetooth uh, supremely hackable because uh, you can you can command Bluetooth to have a password of one <laughs> one uh, one byte, uh, which means it's you know there's only 256 choices period which means it's easy to brute force. And I worry about having a Bluetooth-enabled door lock for that reason. So here's the deal. Bluetooth here's is not very secure. Here's my philosophy on door locks. Okay. If you have like a quick set or some of the lower end door locks out there today, you can open it with a screwdriver. <laughs> you want, yeah, I'm that's just, a good point. I mean, that, a lock is really like, only a serving suggestion anyway. Any idiot can get in by kicking a door in or going around back or breaking the glass. Or, you're right. That requires a the, minimal the bigger, bit of The dexterity. lock is merely a suggestion. Please don't go in my house. It's more so, a so social that's, thing. That's one. Now, there are places where connected locks don't make sense. And actually, hotels are one because you can... There's, there's a huge motivation to easily hack yeah, into yeah, it because yeah. your your payoff's much higher That's than coming right. into like a single house. So it's like a, honestly if I replaced yeah. I could replace a deadbolt with this lock. Mm hmm It's a nice lock. Is it? I I have I have had that lock installed in my house. It is a nice lock. Somewhat um, concerned about the spousal acceptance factor on this. But the advantage is if we're not home we can open except for instance I uh we had to put off uh the plumber the other day because nobody was home. Uh, but if I had, I could have just said, oh, yeah, I'll open the door for you. Go on in. That would Yeah, nice. and then you have your cameras monitoring him to make sure he doesn't do anything weird, I no, guess. No, we then. like this guy. He's, he's trustworthy. Okay. Um, well, then the guess. Wow. Okay, that's tempting. But then you have to also have a Nest Connect or a Nest Guard. So with the lock, because it's Bluetooth, it needs Wi-Fi back out if you want to have remote control. And that's what that device does. You okay. plug it in. Okay. And it, and, and it's it also on my Wi-Fi, right? Sensors. It's on my Wi-Fi. It's on your Wi-Fi, and then it talks to the Bluetooth. Okay. The other thing is it has batteries. <laughs> the lock does, yes. Yeah. Of course it does. How do yeah. it get charged? The nice thing about a doorbell is most doorbells have power. If you want a Wi-Fi doorbell that does solar charged Hamptons. No, solar. Hampton, no. Yeah, they have a solar. Yeah. Yeah, really? this exists. Does it, have a big, um, it is, does it have a big solar panel? It, it's it's a little big, but it's not as big as you think it is. Um, and it's auxiliary. So it's Hampton Products, and it is called the Array Lock. A-R-R-A-Y. If, if, if the battery dies, how do you get into your house? <laughs> um, it depends on the lock. Some locks, if you take a 9-volt battery, it'll Yeah, that's what they it. say. You can charge it up with a 9-volt battery. Or um, use a screwdriver. <laughs> There's the solar. <laughs> That's not that big. That's not that big oh, at all. Yeah, yeah, see, there you go. Um, huh. Yeah, because it doesn't need a lot of juice. I would like a lock um, like that that has a keyhole. See, it doesn't look like the Yale has a keyhole. It does not. That's the so override. If you, if you can't get in, you yeah. use a key. Yeah. But this one doesn't have that. So maybe you should go for the array lock. I love having an okay. IoT slash 5G slash Qualcomm chip guru on the show. Don't you, Jeff? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, now we can talk about other things. Let's take a break, and we will talk about other things. But first, a word from Monday. I know it's Wednesday, but Monday.com is going to turn every day into a great day in your office. We just started using Monday.com for uh, show planning for iOS today. And Micah and I are just going, this is great. This is great. Monday.com helps teams manage work and meet deadlines, but also they like to call it a culture, builds a culture of transparency because everything is known. So when you're working on a team, a lot of times there's stuff you don't know, you're not sure about, but with Monday, you'll be motivated to put everything in the Monday dashboard. You can manage all your core business activities in one place. I mean, everything. They have all kinds of templates, but you can create your own as well. High-level roadmaps down to specific day-to-day, -day, even hour-to-hour -hour tasks. Monday.com is so cool. Tailor the, any template to your team's workflow. Automate them with reminders, notifications. Of course, you can use Dropbox or Google Drive for file upload directly from your computer. 65,000 teams are now using Monday.com to get things done. I asked them, why do you call it Monday? Because we want Mondays to be a good day. The day you're going into work is a good day. Look, Discovery uses it. That's pretty cool. We just started using it. I'm loving it. It's great for uh, big teams and little. Anything from two freelancers working together to thousands collaborating across the globe. It replaces a lot of stuff, Excel files and whiteboards, and most importantly, from my point of view, long meetings. There's accountability. You could say who's in charge of what, who's, whose job this is. There's My Week, which is a great way to see what you need to do. You'll never miss another deadline. It's kind of almost a personal assistant for you and your team. Stay in control anywhere you go with a Monday.com mobile app, too. You've got a web-based uh, dashboard. You've got a Monday mobile app on your phone. I just think this is so cool. Mike and I were using, believe it or not, Google Spreadsheets <laughs> to, to manage the show. This is not only more pretty, it's much more effective. It just gets the job done. To learn more and start your 14-day free trial, go to Monday, M-O-N-D-A-Y dot com slash twig. Monday dot com slash twig. Free trial, two weeks free. Just get uh, get your partner, get your other person. By the way, I do know a lot of uh, households and families that use Monday. It's not just for work, although it's intended for work. Turns out, sometimes running a household is kind of like work, too. Monday dot com slash twig. Try it free for two weeks. You're going to love it. And we thank Monday for supporting this week in Google. <sighs> I guess we Have could do a followed? little. Yeah, go ahead. The MIT Media Lab story. Yeah. I don't know what to think about this. And in fact, we have booked Joey Ito for triangulation for an interview with Denise Howell. And I've just been reading all of this. So, Summarize, Jeff. What's what's the deal? So Joey Ito, who's very well known, and by the way, a world. great guy. I know him. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for him. He is. Uh, uh, he was one of the pioneers of social. What we would now think of as social media, going way back. And he became, without a graduate degree, he became director of the MIT Media Lab. And everybody and then, who knows MIT Media Lab knows what, how important that is to everything we do these days. It all so came then, out of the media lab. Um, after Epstein uh, killed himself, uh, allegedly, uh, Ito had to come out with an apology saying that uh, five years after Epstein was, um, or, 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 or uh, what was he? He was uh, convicted. He, he was convicted. He, 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 he and he a convicted case. sex offender for sex of, with minors. Of, of children, of children. Uh, five years after that, Ito uh, went to events with him, uh, raised money for the school from him, and even raised money for the companies in which Ito and his fund invest. And visited several of Epstein's residences. And of course, yes. the and then there residences was also a story, are where these things happened. There was also a story that, um, that the founder of the MIT Media Lab, Marvin Minsky, uh, who's now departed, uh, in one set of allegations, uh, was the um, uh, received, um, I don't know how to say this, um, allegedly uh, had sex with minors under the ages of Epstein. 
So all this is roiling around. So Joy Eater writes an apology. It doesn't say how much money he got for the school. It doesn't say how much money he got for his companies. He does it say, let me say, read what he says, because I, I, it's important. I want you to know in all my interactions with Epstein, I was never involved in, never, never heard him talk about, and never saw any evidence of the horrific acts that he was accused of. That said, I take full responsibility for my error in judgment. I'm deeply sorry to the survivors, to the Media Lab, and the MIT community for bringing such a person into our network. And, yeah. and people aren't, I, I think you can take that at face value and believe that, but it's still, why were you having any association whatsoever with this child molester? He was a convicted molester? sex offender, mo child molester. He was molester. a child molester. He was convicted. So, last night, uh, Ethan Zuckerman, who heads one of the centers at the, at the Media Lab, um, had sent a letter of apology to people he was involved with about this and said that he was going to leave at the end of this term, see through his work for this year. And then it leaked out to the Boston Globe. And so he has resigned uh, in protest. Another scholar there who's also associated with, associated with Cornell has resigned and is taking his work out. Um, Ito is also on the boards of uh, the MacArthur Foundation, the Knight Foundation, and the New York Times. So this is a story that's just roiling right now in my world. And it so was Stacey, the Boston Globe that broke this, by the way, not the New York Times, I should point out. No, no. The, the New York Times did write a story about his apology. But I I complained that his head, the headline said, MIT media director person apologized for Epstein connections. Uh, it didn't say New York Times board director. Yeah. And people, Some people, some trolls came after me and, uh, about that. But the, you can bet the New York Post said New York they Times. They sure did. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, apologize. Yeah, it's in so, the headline. So New York Times board member apologizes for Epstein ties on the post. So this is all around. It's a, it's a big story in my world. It's a story in, you know, media and technology world. Stacey, you were trying to say. No, I was just going to point out that there are plenty of convicted sex offenders. It's hard. Like, I'm, this, I'm not excusing Epstein. I am not excusing the Media Lab. I will say that there are probably people you interact with on a daily basis that may have had similar problems that you just uh, haven't looked up. Yeah, okay. Uh, everybody knew what Epstein had been convicted of. Everybody knew what Epstein had been convicted of. And that's, that's the question. I mean, did did everyone Absolutely. Know? Yeah, so, let, me say yeah. This, let me say this. The, the I have sympathy if you've, if you, you know, we had a case where we gave an honor to Charlie Rose. And yeah, you didn't know school. about the Me Too stuff. And we stuff. didn't know about it, and we yeah. withdrew it when the news came out, right? We, didn't, we had no knowledge. Uh, I have sympathy for those who accept money or give honors to those who later turn out to have had something bad in their past. In this case, oh yeah, I mean, and I also know that when giving honors and, and accepting money, you do a background check on people. That's okay. what happens. And so uh, that is standard process. And, and I should point out, there are people convicted, uh, convicted sex offenders for peeing in public, but when you do the background research and you find out he was convicted for pedophilia right. and that his that the press had nicknamed his private jet the Lolita Express, yeah. are you so desperate for money that you say, oh, well, you know. And and, and Ethan Zuckerman, uh, in 2014, Ethan's, and I have a great deal of respect for Ethan, and I complimented him last night on his principles on this. Uh, Joey tried to get Ethan to meet Epstein in 2014, Ethan refused. Yeah, Ethan and told knew. Joey, you should not meet him. Yeah, so Joey knew too. Okay. Well, then that's yeah. Then that's very different. I've now this, in full this, disclosure. So I knew Glenn Maxwell. I worked for her father. She was Glenn the Maxwell is enabler. alleged to be the yeah. enabler of all this. Right. Uh, so just full disclosure there. I had very little well, contact with her. So one thing like that's her, becoming but. rapidly becoming very very clear is that Epstein was very active after his conviction in spreading uh, philanthropy and getting in getting to know people and and there were there, the connections to Epstein are everywhere yeah so uh, and this was his mo i believe that was part of the deal was this is oh, yeah. how this oh, is yeah. how i rehabilitate my reputation uh i you know w so it's what would you do, Jeff? We we have an interview scheduled with Joey. I was surprised the Media Lab has not canceled it. Uh, the Media oh, Lab oh. is very much our beat. It's something we want to cover. Denise yeah, it Howell is, is it scheduled is. to do the interview. I told Denise, I'm going to leave this up to you, but you absolutely have to bring it up. It could um, be. It could be. But the, now this interview is a whole different story. It sure well, is. Well, that's okay. 
I mean, yeah, you that's should, not I bad. Mean, that's journalism. It, yeah. <sighs> um. What would I do if, if you I ask you? him about? I mean, I would bring him on and ask him about it. You have and to do that much anyway. You have yeah. to have him talk about it. It's fine to do that. I, I don't mean, have a problem with that. I mean, uh, but you also fact, have I think to press him on all these points. There are these things that he has not said that that's, people are demanding. That's what I told Denise. I said, you, of course, you know, we should bring him on. But if you do, now you are, and and no, nobody here at Twit is anxious to be play the role of Mike Wallace. No. And and it's ask not you. the hard it's not questions. You it's not what we do. It's not what we're, we need to do. Uh, well, Especially, it is if I'm asking Microsoft or you know if I'm asking yeah, Intel. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. Didn't but in terms you of kind of personal, but, but uh, this kind of thing, scandals. that's a news story, not a tech story. Yeah, triangulation right. is not. That's a not hard, our. That's not, not the venue hard for news. it. Yeah, and I don't want to right. put Denise in that position, so I'm leaving it up to her. Yeah, but I, I do yeah, believe I that if we interview him, we have to ask the tough questions. I also would do some some like beforehand. I mean, I would talk to Jenny Jardin who has talked about this a lot on Twitter and, and, and is um, angry about this. Yeah. Uh, I would talk because to some she, folks beforehand to get, get the perspective and, yeah. and, and, and let them know that that perspective is going to be represented. Good. Uh, the other thing that happened around this, uh, the whole Epstein story is because it's a, a bit up our alley. Um, I don't know if you saw, there was a picture of Glenn Maxwell, the enabler, alleged enabler, uh, supposedly had an in and out burger, uh, in LA, and then it came out this week that the photo was faked, oh. and it was fed to the New York Post by a, an Epstein lawyer. <gasps> this whole thing is just is just deep fakes all out, over. Uh, so this is a fake picture. If you look at the well, if you look at the back, the 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 bus the bus shelter there for some reason they changed the uh, movie being uh, advertised in that bus shelter. Wow. Uh, wow. It's the lawyer's dog. They were trying to act like it was her dog. So it's, wow. Yeah, it's all just. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> Speaking of deep fakes, and don't worry, Karsten, I'm not going there. Um, uh, my my friend Claire Wardle, who heads First Draft, which is an amazing organization that brings together newsrooms to, to deal with misinformation, disinformation. She did a great video on deep fakes for the New York Times because it's not a YouTube video. It's on the bottom of the rundown. I actually think you'd you'd enjoy watching it for a minute because it's also not techno panicky. <laughs> and here it is. Talking to you about a new technology that's affecting famous people. Remember when Obama called Trump a dick? Complete dick. <laughs> or the time Kim Kardashian rapped? Because I'm always half naked. Or when Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonated himself? Get out of this! The bomb in there! Get out! <laughs> deep fake. Deep fake. Deep fake. Gotta be kidding. That's my favorite, by the way. Hey, pause that for a minute. I'm yeah. not Adele. That, but I am an what? expert in online manipulation. Isn't that great? Wait a minute. I thought that was Adele. Oh, <laughs> it was. It was Claire Wardle. Yeah. <gasps> okay, so uh, we've been preparing the world for this for some time now. Yeah. yeah. There's been Photoshop fakes like that. Exactly. By Maxwell. This has been going on for decades. Um... Are people so dumb that, well, I don't know. What are we going to do? We just can't believe your eyes anymore. No That's video. That's hard. Every part, of our, every part of our brain trusts what we see. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, we, it's we, why we mirages believe, work. People believe everything <laughs> they read on the internet, right? Well, no, that's, uh, I feel like people, I will say my daughter has already learned how to spot Photoshop fakes and in ways that are highly sophisticated, like, she looks for like oh, that's really good. cinching in and yeah, like good. weird misalignments. She in, takes pleasure in it, it now, right? In, 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 yeah, and it's yeah. it's instinctive in a way that. And know, for like, now, oh. deep fakes are. If you look at them, there's something a little odd about them, but that's Some not going to yeah. last long. And so if you're not the question is, yeah, can you can you can we find things that as humans we can see and say, oh, but the other thing is, even though we know things are fake. They still have the power to influence us, and that's that's just part of being human. It's kind of like funky smells, right? There is a visceral reaction to visual stimuli that really our lizard can brains change. go. Yes, I just saw yeah. that. I saw it with my own so eyes. I, I'm, that's a phrase. I'm listening to uh, Daniel Kahneman's "Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow." Yeah, what a good book. Mm -hmm. it, it is. It's 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 dense, but it yeah, it's that it's that instantaneous. Um, 
uh, instinctual brain yeah, system I saw one it with yeah. my own eyes and and it just reacts like that that's that's how we that's how we do things quickly that's how we defend ourselves doing all kinds of stuff but yeah it doesn't it doesn't bother to think things through that has to be triggered as a separate system and so you know yeah. I wonder how you'd remake media and including journalism with that in mind with knowing that uh, there's a because what what are the propagandists doing? What are the bad guys doing? They're going to that instinctual thing. They're they're trying to get the oxy oxytocin oxytocin, yes, oxytocin yeah. uh, flowing. Um, it feels good to be angry. I'm angry, and I can make you angry. And uh, actually, that didn't feel good. Okay. No, that's dopamine. Oh yeah, oxytocin is the love drug. Oxytocin is what you get when you hug a kid or you yeah, sniff a baby I'm or you love. pet your dog. Yeah. Any hug that lasts. Yeah. Longer than. By the way, did you see uh, Keanu Reeves stop this robbery at a 7 Eleven? This is, is this amazing. is kind of amazing. He He's is, signing an he autograph. Is an amazing man. Yeah. I mean, Keanu is God. Oh, oh, my God. Did you see that? The guy pulled out a gun? Wait a minute. Keanu, what are you going to do? Keanu, this isn't a movie. You, you, there's no bullet time. Oh, boy. This is some guy, some guy in the alley in the uh, aisles is uh, shooting this with his camera phone. You could tell because it's vertical video. Keanu is talking uh, to the guy now. And he, and he switched perspective completely with, uh, with no problem? I think he crossed the line. Uh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Keanu is so good. He's going he's gonna to give the man a dollar. <laughs> well, that's a bunch of Franklins. Anyway, that's a deep fake, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think if you look at it, it's pretty obviously a deep fake. Although I have to yeah. say, kudos to the people who, who crafted this video. because it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, but they're just pacing. Except somehow it's a two-camera shoot. Yeah, somehow we got a two-camera shoot. I don't know. <laughs> you can't really cross the line with one camera, I don't think. And yeah. managed to edit it on the fly. It's very impressive what these phones can do. It must be a Samsung Note 10. But honestly, if you showed this to a relative who's not wise in the ways of the world, do you think they would believe it? Um, No. <laughs> this is a little much. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So um, I don't think education is going to, I think that's the point you were making, right, Stacey, is that because. Well, no, I just, I think that some people will become more sophisticated. I was making two points. One, we're already becoming more sophisticated at spotting manipulation. I think the youngs are better than the olds. At least and they two, know it can be manipulated. Well, yeah. And two, it's still going to have an effect because our brains right. aren't that smart. Right. <laughs> We're going to see something and it's going to color our opinions, our reactions to things, even if we intellectually know they're not true. So if I see if you all, if someone made a deep fake of me kicking puppy dogs and I explained how that was not Never. true, you're still going to be like, when you see me, you're going to your brain's going to call up me kicking a puppy dog. And you're going to be like, that person mm -hmm. is not a good person, yeah. even though I am a very good person. Well, wow. here's the other piece. Here's the other piece. I, I want to do an experiment uh, seriously about this. So, so Kahneman also talks about how you you can prime the brain, right? That if you if you see a bunch of happy things and then you see a, a news item, um, you're more likely to 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 judge it positively than than if you see gruesome things, right? And what does media do all the time? It shows you gruesome things. I want to do a little experiment. And, and, but however, what does the internet show you all the time? Kittens and puppies. Why are we so angry when we see kittens and puppies? I wonder. I actually want to do an, a simple little dumb experiment where, where you show one group kittens and puppies and then the same headlines and you show somebody else gruesome crap and then you show them the same headlines, what their reaction to those headlines is. <sighs> I avoid all gruesome crap on the internet. I only look at, I only consume I, kittens I and puppies. I increasingly, I bet you this is a nationwide phenomenon. I'm watching a lot less news. I'm just, I'm burying myself in, uh, I don't think it's even escapism. I'm just not focusing on that anymore. I also- Oh, look, you got a brief shot of a puppy. But then she, she moves. Aww. Oh, your puppy. Oh. Oh, she's- Stacy's, yeah, she's Stacy's- uh, okay, Ready? Here we go. Blood pressure is 100 points lower than ours. Oh. Just because of that. Yay. That fuzzy brown up, thing up. on the ground there. Uh. And- as you can see, I have not kicked her at all. Sometimes. <laughs> She's over there in the corner, scared of you, trying to be as far away from you as she can, rubbing against never. the wall. Sometimes, <laughs> never. though, sometimes, though no, never. it's a good thing when somebody's angry. I love Scott Galloway. I don't know. How do you feel about Professor Galloway? Because uh, he's kind of. 
I, I know across, him. I've, I've been at conference with him a lot. I think this is, I think he's turned into pure showbiz. I think this is awful. It is showbiz. I think, I, <laughs> yeah, it's pure. And he's, he's, it's, sorry, I'm going to say it. Got to say it. He is, is, he's going toward techno panic to try to sell books. Um, he's a nice guy, but he, I think he's gone over the edge where you compare that to uh, Stratechery's analysis, which is uh, is wise and mature and fact filled. I and his think is that's interesting. Showbiz. It's the same, uh, by the way, the same bottom line result. Uh, we're talking yeah, about close. both. We're talking about we work. Scott calls it we what we WTF. <laughs> both point out that there are some they're they're doing an IPO. Both point out there's some serious uh, issues in uh, the financials that anybody considering uh, we work as an investment should consider. Ben's more balanced because he kind of gives the WeWork's point of view on this, but ultimately concludes the same thing, which is, um, he says, Ben Thompson says, in short, there's a case that WeWork is both a symptom of software eating the world as well as an enabler and driver of the same, which would mean the company would still have access to the capital it needs even in a recession. See, this is the fear, is that WeWork going into a recession has a mismatch of commitments it has long term as long as 15 year leases but if there's a recession its income could change in a but as ben also moment. points out in a recession is when companies will more want to save money on things like office space and they yeah. may end up getting uh, more business as a result the problem is you just and don't he control points out how it's an, you know but it's an it's an aws model what and, what, and, what and he really points numbers. out is the real thing that's letting we work perhaps skate through this is they can just walk away from those leases and nobody's going to do anything. Exactly. <laughs> Which so of a lot course of the things that others complain about, yeah. uh, like how the company's structured, so you can't get to the leases. Is an yeah, there's an problem. LLC for each one, a separate LLC for each one, and they can't get to the major, the big corporate. Now that's not. That is how we built big internet infrastructure back yeah. in the aughts. I mean, bankruptcy mm -hmm. helped lower the costs of things like Akamai for everyone. So the, in the in end, some ways, Ben's. Yeah. Conclusion is the dur the real concerns about duration mismatch in a recession is a very good reason to stay away. That yeah. and the but that's, that's like the last sentence. But he does well, go ben back does. And through it. Meanwhile, uh, Scott, it's he acknowledges like the the, the, hot the, take. the sense behind the model. Yeah. And as opposed to others who just dismiss it and make fun of it, uh, he delves in and and understands it. Scott is do very much the Scott Jim Cramer now of this oh, stuff. It's a clown costume. One. Well, but it was fun. Like it was a fun like read. He does, he does brilliant presentations. Yeah. Um, but it's all shivers now. He's gone kind of over the edge. And and I mean, there's some self dealing in the WeWork. Uh, I, mm -hmm. the oh, document. there's big self dealing. I'm, just, I'm like, good lord, this thing. Adam Adam sold the We trademark. To we work for five point nine million dollars. He also took seven hundred million dollars in stock off the table before the uh, IPO, uh, which, as Scott says, is is seven hundred million red flags to spell words on the field of a football on the football field at halftime, saying, "Get me the hell out of this stock!" But you should buy some. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoyed it. It's funny. It's funny, but, but is but it? It's not, not wrong either. Oh, it, yeah, no. Because it, you enjoyed it is reading it, Ben Thompson's three times longer because thoughtful it was actually piece. informative. Okay. <laughs> he just dismissed there's there's something to understand here. And Ben realizes that yes. and explains it and does journalism. Scott just no, Scott's makes not fun doing of him journalism. Which is, which is Scott's okay. no, doing punditry. Well, yeah, but that should include some yeah. facts and some and some some sense to it. He's just exploiting it for the yucks. Uh, if he if it were pure comedy, but that's not what he does. That's not how he sells himself. He sells himself as a business analyst. I think it's a matter, honestly, of just uh, taste. Like some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. I think it's a matter of substance, and Scott's lacks it. You, you, you think yeah, there, I'm with Jeff some, on this. There's some substance in here. Not very much. And, mm -hmm. and, and what it is, is there's also is cartoons, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a very serious, very serious. I have a very serious question. No, I do have a. a I don't know if it's a policy question, but it, this model, the AWS, the uh, someone sent me the server for serverification of everything. Serverification, I like that. Yeah, word. it's it's terrible. But this idea that we're turning our capital, basically all of our capital, as a business, even as like a individual, 
into an operational expense. So mm-hmm. we're renting everything. Because in our country, historically, wealth generation has accrued to people who have capital investments like a home or less so a car, but you can buy a car and make money off of it, for example, if you want. It feels like a huge societal shift that we're undergoing. And I really wish we had more. I want to read more books. I want to understand where economists think how that's going to affect our or widening gap in wealth, how it's going to affect mm-hmm. like assets over time. And I feel like nobody's really talking very smartly about this. So I, I throw this out there. I would love to learn more about this. I want to know who's thinking about this. Send me, because I'm thinking about it and I'm not smart enough to know what it's going to mean. So I just realized so, that the, what's really going on in this show is the tension between my Scott Galloway-esque uh, <laughs> antics and you two's thoughtful, measured... It works better, Leo, when you fact, have purple hair. <laughs> Fact-based <laughs> journalism. And well-animated eyebrows. Yeah. I kind of like there, there was... I, I, I forget who... I, I would I juggle I during this, this show if I could. Well, I'm the guy some, sitting in front of a balloons. giant Mylar 3. I mean, You've come got on. noisemakers right in front of you. Go ahead. Do yeah. it. Where's the noise? No, in front of you. There's noisemakers. Do it. How appropriate this can you is, get? The show all about Google. You know what the problem with modern (laughs) noisemakers? They make no noise. That that was really sad. You're right. (laughs) Stacy, since you're being serious, I'll be serious. We'll ignore the clown in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) So, Stacy. Go ahead. I dare you. Try to make an important point. Just try. I dare you. I got cupcakes. And I'm not afraid to use them. (laughs) So. Okay. Go ahead. You guys, I'm going to take a nap. Go ahead. It's all yours. So somebody tweeted, I can't remember who, um, uh, the the CEOs who all got together last week and said, supposedly, and we will take this with a grain of salt the size of Utah, um, that the shareholders are no shareholder return is no longer their primary value. They deal with all these constituencies of which shareholders are one. And we can read that as the BS. Sorry, because whoever has to cut that out, uh, that it probably is. Um, but somebody pointed out that there's there to your point, Stacey. There's a big transition going on now, and you go from the industri- from from the time of guilds to corporations. And whoever it was said now we're in a, in the in the in the age of networks, and you have to operate differently with all these constituencies. I think that might be stretching it, but your, your, your spidey sense here, I think is quite right. We're in a fundamental economic shift in a structural shift in how things are done. And we don't really understand it at all yet. I agree. Now yeah, you can hit the noise maker. We can call it a paradigm shift. Oh, don't. So if sorry. you use those I'm words, so I hear right out. $5 in the jar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, how so, many, how hey, many for moral panic hey, did you have to shove hey, in? Wait a minute, what's uh, going on here? That's 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 they're supporting s- the world. They're stealing the cupcakes. Oh, <laughs> the four With staff. The, the four staff has been sitting here, staring at all the sweets arrayed in front of me, and they can't touch them. I'm just trying to what feed about you. Our I show think. guests are they getting any? Would you guys like cupcakes or oh, macaroons uh, or I, cookies? I for you, please. No, no, you come on. Dana's going to do it. I know she is. She's been sitting through this. She's no. She's All very right. Heavy. There we go. There oh. you go. No, come no, on. No, no, no. no, you don't have to use no, the I hand. <laughs> Najee, well, come on. Come on. You're, You're already, already on, on camera. camera. Ramon, have oh. some. Ramon's <laughs> taking pictures, of course. Got to get that on your Instagram. Are you an influencer? No. Okay. Oh, he's going to take that. I like how they're still hesitant as they walk know, up. They're like creeping up. I know. Radio we can TV. see no, you. No. We, yeah. You're on camera. You're on. We see everything. <laughs> everything. Now, I want my cupcake. Are you going to send it in the mail like you did the roadie? Yeah, give me an envelope. I'll FedEx it to you. <laughs> so I asked, where did the roadie maker go? Because it's not in the kitchen anymore. Oh, yeah. Really? Our supervising producer took it home. It's oh, a, but really? did you buy it? It's in her kitchen. They... I don't know. I don't think so. You can't eat roadie. No, but I think it should be returned to roadie Matic if we're not going to use it. All right. We're I'm, sent to uh, Stacy. What, uh, what was for lunch on lunch Wednesday? Uh, we had uh, Lily Kai Chinese. It was very good. 
Oh, it's lunch. Oh, Wednesday. You know that, see? Jeff now knows this because he was lunch. here. Yeah. Every Wednesday. Oh, speaking of lunch, I just had the Chipotle queso recently thinking that they had changed it, but they didn't. So everybody do not be fooled. It's still bad. Okay. Is there any other source of queso in the great Pacific Northwest? Trader yeah, I Joe's? can make it myself. <laughs> Trader Joe's has decent queso. In a decent jar? Sort of. For jar queso, it's okay. For jar queso, oh, it's okay. okay. No. That is, no. That All right, well, I've got another one for you. Movie. Have you had the Burger King Impossible Whopper? I have. I have, actually. I had it at an airport. A review, please. What did you think, What'd you I, think Stacey? I mean, I thought it was good. I mean. <laughs> so this is the new so pseudo meat that ironically... For me, because I'm on a ketogenic diet, I can't eat. I can eat meat meat, but I can't eat pseudo meat because it's got a lot of carbs in it. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew can't eat it either. Does it taste but like uh, a hamburger? It has the texture of a hamburger. Uh, it does not taste like it has a, a slight. Well, here's I had I had my first impossible at was it called umami? Umami burger. Umami. Yeah. Umami. It was very good. Yeah. It was very good. Yeah. And then I went, uh, then, then two days later, I was at the... Um, you wouldn't expect Burger King to make it as well as Umami Burger. Uh, no, and it's not. It has a slight weird taste of Burger King, and Umami was not. It was burger. It was, it was very good. I honestly, the color was a little... I, I honestly, and, and as, a, as somebody, because I'm on keto, I eat a lot of meat because I can't eat any carbs, zero carbs. Um, but I, I don't want to be a meat eater. I'd rather be a vegetarian. And when they can come up with vat-raised muscle matter or whatever it's going to be but that's not what this chicken is nubs. yeah that's not what this nubs. is chicken this nubs. is this is not yep. actual meat chicken knobs are they meat chicken knobs are uh, margaret atwood wrote yes. about them in yeah. parks and Crate. okay yeah 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 it's not real <laughs> it was vat grown chicken <laughs> yeah yeah vat grown chicken that's what i'm ready for anytime because i want to guess the nutritional value of meat without the uh sad fact that you have to kill an animal to get it we had guests the other day who were, we had to go meet them in the city, a restaurant, but I had to find a restaurant where they're, they're on keto and they're vegetarian. That's hard. That's, That's really impossible. hard. That's impossible. That's really, but not you cannot, impossible, impossible, but very difficult. We found a place that had pizza made with cauliflower um, Bingo. dough. There you go. That worked. Yeah, my husband's Lots on a weird diet. Anna was a vegetarian, and I just, I literally gave up. We we started eating bowls every night, which yeah, was basically. You get a bowl, and you get a bowl, and you get a bowl. There are three different bowls. <laughs> you you basically do a base layer and then pour whatever Customize. you want on Customize. Customize, yeah. Um, the Stadia Founders Edition is sold out. I don't like those stories because we don't know how many they had. Yeah. Almost sold out in some countries. They could have sold five of them. We don't know. November is when uh, Google's streaming gaming service comes. NVIDIA has been making a lot of noise saying, you know, we've had GeForce Now for years. We've been doing this for years. <laughs> really? This is not new. We're doing it too. Um, let me do, let's see. Oh, I'm sad. I'm sad. And this, this uh, San Francisco so webcam... Sincere. Has been up and Have running since before Jeff oh, left yeah, this the is city. Sad. The San Francisco Fog Cam. It's the world's oldest public webcam. It went up in 1995. They were inspired by a webcam you and I remember, the, which wasn't as a, a streaming camera. It wasn't public. The Cambridge uh, Coffee Cam. Right. Um, the C Cambridge Trojan Room Coffee Cam. I wonder if it's... I see a link. Is it still there? No. It was. Yeah, it would upload an image of a coffee pot three times a minute. Uh, this was. This was one of the. This was the very first cam. The fog cam was on the roof at San Francisco State University uh, for many, many years, but they're taking it down. It's time to say goodbye. I think these are ads. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what this slideshow has to do with anything. It's just random. This is the most random slideshow I've ever seen. This is, this is just, I feel it's like. It's the perfect slideshow for Twig. It's like a Rorschach test. I don't know what, I mean, what is going on. Help me. I'm trapped. 
I don't know what's going on. Well, Jeff, can you can you uh, say the name of each thing as it goes by, please? Uh, no, no, that's a Ramos Fizz, a San Francisco drink invented. Well, no, uh, no, no. Now that's that's the Irish coffee down at Watch Oh, that's it's the Irish yeah. coffee from the Buena Vista. Okay, yeah, yeah, Buena yeah. Vista, yeah, tourist yeah. trap. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, a guy named Maurice Campbell, a San Francisco guy who invented so-called Swedish Sky Vodka. Uh, tofu was not discovered in the Bay Area, but it was... Might as well have been. It, it, it was... <laughs> the antioxidant uh, properties were discovered by a Berkeley scientist. I guess this is a San Francisco slideshow. Vitamin K discovered in basil. The element seaborgium <laughs> was discovered. What is this what slideshow? Is this? I don't know. I think the San Francisco what Chronicles lost its together? mind. I don't... <sighs> It's all Berkeley I mean, it's stuff. educational. Yeah. So back to the fog it cam. It started with fog cam. That's the fog cam, which is the name I mean, of this story. But the slideshow has nothing to do with it. Maybe, well... Got you to yeah. click. I don't... It got me to click, no kidding. Here's a Rube Goldberg machine. Here's some a woman staring at some computer screens. A lot of computer screens. Um... Oh, it, it tells you what it's doing. Yeah, but why? It's the 911 why? center. Yeah, and there's a deep sea but, 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 but diving what are these, What does one thing have to do with another? Here's a guy uh, <laughs> washing people, off his wetsuit. Oh, is, that your, is, that, is that how you... That's is that Dev Nell's wetsuit. Dev yeah, there yeah, we go. We finally Null. got it. Yeah. It's got the hose in it. Yeah, I never <laughs> had a hose in mine. Here's a cable modem. Um... <laughs> Here is ooh, ooh, a synthesizer. Oh, this is the OP1. That's, that's the OP1. That's the OP1 synthesizer by Teenage awesome. Engineering of Sweden. I want that one. I know, I do too. They're, it's, they're sold it's, out. Just, here's the guy who invented the floppy disk, Alan Shugart. Aw. Here's the guy. Finally, finally, the fog the cam. Back, the fog cam. We've gone all oh, the way around. God, thank God we're free. So, you know, after fog cam, you know what I created? What? Burbo cam. Oh. In Bourbon Street. In New Orleans, you did the first Bourbon Street webcam. Webcam, we did that, and and um, were you at the uh, could, Nola that Observer? Could get, that and, could uh, lose people's jobs. Like, yeah, <laughs> we know so, what happens. Son. Yeah, there was a lot of that on Bourbon Street. So you weren't People above said, uh, you weren't above pandering, is what you're oh, saying? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> clicks for clicks. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, That's like the pre mugshot. Uh, you know, the mugshot websites. This is like before the mugshots. The bourbon you're there cam. And with facial Bourbon. recognition, you could you, actually create a timeline for people Who did you create that for? That. The NOLA Observer? For, for Advance, which owned at the time the Times Picayune. Oh, the Times. Or NOLA.com, which is since Times Picayune. This is, since this is actually a timely story. The Times Picayune is gone. Yep. Yep. One of the great local papers, New Orleans papers. And, by the way, they had a really credible digital strategy with nola.com mm -hmm. what happened they got uh bought. when they the reduced weird... frequency of delivery yeah the, the baton rouge paper uh took advantage of new orleanians uh anger at this and came in and competed with them uneconomically but it finally become became uneconomical for the times picky unit keep going they sold the paper and the advocate laid off the entire newsroom they sold the paper to one of those free weekly the, papers, which well, is no, the advocate, no, no, the no? advocate was a was a was a real paper from oh. Baton Rouge. Oh, okay, oh, okay. I thought it was one of the weeklies that bought them. Okay, no, it wasn't like the Examiner in San Francisco. Oh, oh that did happen in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I used I, I would I tell people I used to work on the Examiner when it was a real paper. It was absorbed by the Advocate. Isn't that sad? That happened in July. Yet yeah. another uh, daily gone. Yep. And the whole staff is, or no, only a third of the staff is left. Two thirds of the staff are gone. Um, should we do a change Else, log? Let's play the pay the t t timpanies here. All right. Wait a minute. Go get I the. Wanted, I wanted to talk. I actually. <laughs> no. Wanted, okay. Before, before that, that. Before that, I wanted to talk. Produce, about Karsten. One story that's actually related to uh, to what we were just talking about. Yes. Uh, the fact that. Uh, uh, we just hit the era of Google searches no that result in no clicks. Uh, Google another no paradigm longer shift. sends traffic to to anyone. What? Yeah, over fifty percent of Google searches don't result in clicks to 
Oh, people the do the search and then and then go get a hot dog. No, they, no, they, they do, do the, the search, search and they get the read the blurb. Oh, and say, this is not good. This is living. This is, this is, this is evidence Germany of the was, snippet yeah, war. This is the snippet war. So but this is has been won. By, yeah, and this is Google. actually good because this, well, as long as we can figure out or Google can figure out how to monetize this, um, it's okay because they needed a strategy for dealing with things like voice and a world where screens are smaller or non-existent. Mm. And they're still serving their audience. The question is, how does that affect their revenue? Actually, the question is, how does it affect their profits? <laughs> so this is... And publishers are going to complain that it affects their profits. This well, came yeah, up publishers always complain. In, exactly. With, with Google's announcements about uh, Project Owl or no, this is something new. So they had announced this. It's a, they said that this before. It's only, by the way, I misheard and heard you say 50. It's 15, one five. Less than half of Google searches now result in a click. So it is 50. 50. Zero 50. click. Five this is, zero. This is not a Google. Uh, yeah, this isn't a this Google is, number. This, this is, is a, a study from random software company. company Spark Toro. Oh come so, on, oh, Spark well. Toro! Last month, a majority of all browser-based Google searches resulted in zero. How does yeah, Spark Toro know? I'm calling the authorities. <laughs> Spark Toro. <laughs> that sounds made up. Okay, all, company speaking of, speaking all software all software companies sound made up. Yeah, that's true. They're all the good names are taken. Uh speaking of made up uh stories, apparently, did you hear Google uh manipulated millions of votes Ugh. uh and swayed the election? Did you hear that? All their fault. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just they just have it out for conservatives. That's what they do all the time, right? Millions of votes. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This just we should debunk it. Actually, I have to say, uh, put the irony label around this, people. Yeah, Devin Coldway at uh, TechCrunch did a really, uh, I thought, very quality job of debunking it. He starts with the president's tweet. Coincidentally, Fox News had just mentioned that about five minutes earlier. Uh, the report that Fox was talking about came out in 2017. It, it was a study of 95 people. <laughs> 95 people over the 25 days preceding the election. And even if even the n results from the 95 people m didn't pr prove or demonstrate anything like the report, um, there's no abstract, no introduction, no methods section to show the statistics work and definition of terms, no discussion, no references. It was not reviewed by any peers. Uh, in fact, it, it was the creation of a guy who has written, apparently, many, many opinion pieces uh, against Google on, on outlets like the Epic Times, which is, of course, Falun Gong's bizarre news source, and the Daily mm -hmm. Caller, as well as USA Today and Bloomberg Business Week. Citing math he does not describe, he declared there was a pro-Clinton bias in Google's search results. No, he said it would over time shift at least 2.6 million votes to Clinton. We don't know how much time or or how. So it was bogus. And I don't even know why I'm spending any energy on this. Another it tweet. When you debunk things, you end up spreading right. Another message. Yeah, right. Trapped. Trapped. You can't win. Trapped. trapped. That's why I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> I'm just trapped. Here, quick. I'm trapped. Have a cookie. Puppy oh, cam. puppy cam. Oh, puppy cam. Oh, puppy wakes up. You called? No, she knows you rang? Oh, what is she, a corgi? Uh, no, she is a mutt. A mutt corgi. There's she's corgi in there somewhere. That's what I tell my daughter, but she doesn't believe me. Oh, man. I see. Did you see in the midst of the whole Portland Antifa is going to go against the Proud Boys, blah, 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 there was a parade of corgis. Again, the Ooh, solution like to corgis. everything is a parade of corgis. Corgis are the, are the solution to everything, indeed. Now. Uh, I got a quick question for you, Stacey. Oh, before, yes. before, real quick. Uh, Ikea says they're going to go heavy into IoT. Yes. Oh, yeah, is that a standard? Let's, let us talk about this. Yes. This okay. is, a, is that a standards hell? or does, how, how, if, you're a, if you're a fifth party like that, how do you get in and make everybody happy? So Ikea has been doing this for a while, and what they've done is created a separate business unit. This isn't that weird because what I learned when I visited Ikea a couple of years ago is 
everything's a separate business unit in Ikea. So that's yeah. one. I also so, learned that Swedish meatballs and lingonberry jam are an amazing combination, contrary to what you'd think. Oh, but you can't eat them because they meatballs have meatballs are really them, good. So. They are really good. Like the, the corporate Ikea meatballs are way better than the store Ikea meatballs. Oh, you had the corporate Ikea meatballs. Yes, I, I went because they promised me moose meatballs, but apparently uh, it was not hunting season, so they did not have moose in the, the cafeteria. This was their excuse. And probably I believe why they it. were so good. Um, but still, delicious meatballs. The point here is... Um, <laughs> Not meatballs. They were making, for instance, yourself. they were making coffee tables with built-in wireless Qi charging. Uh, they've done yes, for they a couple were. of years. They've been doing that. I think that's really cool. Yep. I wish it were. I wish I could get it from Restoration Hardware, though, not IKEA. <laughs> oh, you're so not really. I don't want to put. I have had flat pack. Go with and room I don't and like, board. It's nicer than Restoration. I don't like putting it all together. Yes, I used to. I used to when we got married. The first Ikea was in Philadelphia. We drove my little Honda down. We yeah. furnished oh, almost yeah. our entire house. Cheap. Yeah. Out of, out of, out of, oh, but I've it was done great. that. I had a great dining room I've set. I've done that. I, my, I thought this was so amazing. I said, we've got to go to where this happens. And we went to vaca on vacation to Sweden because wow. of Ikea. Wow. That's nutty. No, but I think Ikea has done a lot for the reputation of the Swedes. I said a place okay. that has, so it has a special box of dishes for 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 twenty year old single people in an apartment, I that's like socialism in dishes. I love that. Yeah. So we went. There. Okay. So on the smart home front, yes. <laughs> with the creation of this business unit, Since what's going to happen? Since you asked, I will try to answer. They work. IKEA's created. They've done two things. One, they're very focused on creating products that make sense for people, like mainstream consumers. So they do things that are a little different. So like their chat feed light bulbs. Those will work with their hub and their own wireless protocols, right? Oh, so you have no. to have that. that but, but, support a but, but, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm holding. They do Zen, support Zen Google Assistant, Amazon Echo, and for some products, Apple's HomeKit. So what they're doing is they're creating what they feel is an optimal solution for everybody. But if you're really fancy and you want to work outside the box, they're creating links to do so. So Ooh. that is that is the strategy. It's not it a completely terrible working. idea. It's not. I like the trot free bulbs. They're actually once everything got working like it should, they were actually really good. Um, they're friendly in the sense that you don't have to have an echo. You don't have to know you're doing a smart home. You can just yeah. screw these bulbs in, plug this device in, and boom, you have smart lights. You know, there, there's a lot of value in that. And they're relatively inexpensive. And they're doing things, they were doing products that people want. And they have a sustainability angle associated with them too. What's that? So they don't they don't create a connected product if it doesn't have a shelf life of a certain number of years. So they're not going to do some stupid one-off product. How about the security that, angle? How about the security angle? They, I mean, they've done the pen testing. They're not, I mean, nothing's are they ever over the year updatable here. and all of that. They, oh yeah, they they totally are. Okay. Yes. To be fair, IKEA does have a hub. You guys, it has the trod free hub. So you have this oh, tiny little hub. Yeah. It's never going to sell in America if they don't come up with names that don't sound like your future. Hawking a loop. Trod free. I did a whole episode. I've done two episodes actually with a guy who's heading this group up. And in one of them, he's trying to teach me how to say trod free properly. <laughs> well, you do, and apparently. Sometimes. Trod free. Trod free. Trod free. The only thing I learned was, you'll school you via har and omelet. I would like, do an, you like omelet? an omelet. you like an omelet? Well, I actually don't like them, but I learned that. <laughs> hey, the First best night. thing about Sweden is fika. That's what I have. Oh, oh, ready, you guys? We're going to go full circle. Watch it, watch it. Uh -oh, fika uh -oh. yeah. is the three o'clock cake break. Oh, a fika is a tiny cake. Oh. oh, look at that. I am going to make that the title of this show, The Three O'Clock Cake Break. Cake Break. <laughs> now, Thank you, Stacey. I wanted that. Now we can do Can something. we please? The Google <laughs> Change Log. There's nothing. 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 Nothing in the Google Change Log. Well, I, I managed to update my Android Auto. 
I didn't know that I could. You could if force you it. Thanks, settings, thanks to Lifehacker, we now know you can force it. It's Well, it's very easy. It's actually, they, they want you to. It just says, try it. Oh. Um, and it's good. The only complaint I have, because now you, now when you have your audio up, it gives you the directions at the bottom. It keeps nice. that on the screen. Nice. Which is very nice. You can go to more applications more easily, which is very nice. Um, the UI is pretty good. Now my one complaint remains, Google, are you listening? Yeah. In ways, you cannot get... Uh, a, the UI sucks, so you can't tell if a button is hot or not to push it because the colors are, are, aren't different enough and it's really stupid UI design, that's one. B, more irritating, I can't get text turn-by-turn -turn directions in ways. Oh. I don't know if that's because they think, you, you shouldn't be reading now, but I don't know where I'm going next. Yeah. I, I like to get phone, that heads up no difference. in text. I, I do I, like that. I like that. Yeah. So it's something I can't so get that, but otherwise you got it's the good. you got the pop up that said, "Would you like to try it?" And you said yes. If you no, don't no, get that, I went to Life Lifehacker. Yeah, Lifehacker says go into the settings, and there should be now a setting that says "Try the new Android Auto." Here, show it's my the first screen. Thing. Show my screen, cars. There you go. Uh, there, try the new Android Auto. So if you switch that on, then you'll get the little pop up, and you'll be able to try. Do you like the dark mode? No. Okay. I don't. Just checking. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> it's so dark. Too dark. Wow. Google is killing YouTube messages. I didn't even know YouTube had messages. It's a hidden messaging client. It's built into the tube. It's one of Google's seven messaging clients. That it's part of the, if you're counting, it's going away after September 18th, 2019, and then there were six. We hardly knew ye. And then there were six. Wait, when is Hangouts going to be fully deprecated? Please What's happening don't there? say that out loud. Not, Sorry. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's not going away. At least, at least for, for Google, for G Suite people, at least until next summer. Well, I'm a Phi person. Oh. And I also I'm have it. But the problem is, like with the new Samsung phones, I can't choose it as a default messaging app. I have to use the uh, uh, either Android messages or Samsung messages. But I don't want to. But if somebody sends a message to my phone by that and phone's number, it'll go in there and I won't see it. But if they send it to my Google Voice number, which is the number I give everybody, it will still go in Hangouts. So that's I just use Hangouts because I'll see it if they use my proper Google Voice number. So, but, but Hangouts video phone calls still continues, right? I don't care about that Hangouts? so much. There's plenty of video. I care about the fact that I want to be able to see messages on right. android ios and the desktop and right now the desktop solution is not great for android messages there is no mac solution as far as i know um so i just i i pl i want them to keep hangouts or something like it They're hangouts is not hangouts it's it's for... it don't if you don't if i tell google no i understand it's not an sms messaging app it's like it's like whatsapp it's a messaging app just keep that around. I'll be, I'll be happy. As long as Fi can send messages to it, I'll be happy. But we'll see. So there were there were seven. Now there are six messaging apps. And Hangouts um, is apparently just... Why did you ask to do the it's, change? It's log really nothing in it. Okay, so now you can this download... This was your choice. I, well, I'm just trying to move this show on because we got cake. Yeah, I know. Before. You could have skipped it. Uh... Well, no, I can't skip it. People say, where was the change log? Oh. Just because you have a big Mylar 3 behind you doesn't mean you don't get to not do the change log. Just we didn't do the change log for like two or three years. No, two I years. know. But now once I've re resurrected it, I can't kill it again. We're but resurrected. The you, now we're slaves Google, to it. Google Go is a mere seven megabytes. It's the light version of the Google search app intended for the Google Go operating system. But you can now download it. If you want, on any Android phone in the U.S., it's in the Play Store. Or anywhere in the world. Light. It's light. And it but remembers, if you if you lose connectivity, it remembers your searches. Yeah. In fact, I don't know why anybody wouldn't use it. Is there anything yeah. missing from it? Seven megabytes. It keeps your phone... I, I use whatever in... I, sometimes use I browser, use... the browser, probably, not a standalone search app. Well, yeah, but in, in Chrome, there's also a mobile or a data-saving thing, and I turn all those on, and it's quite nice, actually. Good. Yes. I appreciate that. You can now... Uh, you, you'll appreciate this, now that you have a 13-year-old. You can assign reminders to family and friends. 
from Google Assistant. So you could say, hey, Google, remind Stacy to take out the oh, trash. Oh, God, that would be so terrible. My husband will abuse this. No one tell him. No one. <laughs> What's worse is you'll get a notification on your smart display speaker and phone. Ugh. And, yeah, already and, I tell my husband. And he will, Andrew will get notified at the exact time you uh, you asked your assistant to remind him. You can see which reminders you've assigned to your husband, or he can see which ones he's assigned to you, more like. You can even say, hey, you know who, who what are my reminders for Stacy? I like this. There'll be location-based reminders. So he can say, remind Stacy when she's at Chipotle not to eat the, chip, the queso. That will pop nope. up on your phone. So those are actually, I did one of those. Well, I did an ift reminder. It would send me a text anytime my husband passed the grocery store. Perfect. And well, no, it wasn't. In execution. Because by the, the time text you was, got it, it was, the was already store. gone. Yeah. yeah. He was already gone. His and privacy was majorly violated. Yes. Well, I told him I was doing it. And he, the he grocery was grocery store, no which is the name so, of the strip yeah. club in Seattle. Um, you can. <laughs> you don't have to go. Why do you guys hit Leo with the big three, please? Somebody <laughs> sneak out of the table. Every hit town, Leo with the big three every Stacey. town has a bar called the office, so that husbands, wayward husbands, could say, I, "I'm going to the office." I, I, to protect I your privacy, you can send <laughs> and receive reminder. I tell you, I'm the guy. I'm the guy <laughs> with the with the, the buttons. You can. <laughs> You can send and oh, receive look, reminders. Scooter ah! Axe has a punch Leo button. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You can send and receive reminders only from people who are in your Google family group or those who have their accounts linked to the same smart display and speaker as you are and our voice match. So it's not going to be misused. They also have to be in your Google contacts. For parents who want to give their kids access to the assistant on Google Home, you can create an account for kids under 13 through family link. And you can and you can also block anyone from sending you reminders at any time, so you could do that. Noted. 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 Um, I don't. Uh. I'm done. <laughs> Karsten, I'm making an executive decision. Uh. <laughs> I'm the producer. I just produced. Our show today brought to you by... I'm rapidly running out of steam. I need some queso in a jar. Our show today rapidly brought to you by Captera. You want to go there because it is the number one, number one free online resource to help you find software for your business. So many businesses are using old, out-of-the-date software or, or pen, pencil and paper. No matter what you're doing, if you're running a hair salon... If you're looking for sales software, if you need project management software, email marketing software, if you're using software in business, Captera is a directory of the best. You can search in 700 categories. You can narrow it down. You can say, I only want to see the ones with the five-star ratings. I only want to see them if it, you know, if it does this or that. And you can then, and this is the best part about Captera, you can well, actually, before you do that, you can you can make a a chart, a comparison chart of up to four different apps. But then you can do the best part, which is read the reviews. Read the reviews. There's 975,000 actual reviews from real people using the software. They vet it very carefully. So you are now going to be able to see what's out there and see what people who are actually using it think. This is what you need, no matter what kind of software your business needs. Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. The reason there's a thousand reviews every day is because millions of people use Captera every month, and it, and and it's free. There's no charge. In fact, the only thing I'd suggest if you try some software and you think well of it or poorly, leave a review, so that the next person knows. Captera believes software makes the world a better place because software can help every organization become a more efficient, effective version of itself. Visit Captera.com/twig for free. To free. Not freemium, not like we'll pay you, you pay later or anything. No, it's just free. Get all the tools you need to make an informed decision for your business. Captera, C A P T E R R A dot com slash twig. Thank you, Captera, for supporting Twig. Thank you, Twig listeners, for supporting us by using captera.com slash twig. Captera is software selection 
simplified. Stacy, you needn't, but you can, you may, if you wish, share something with us. Oh, I time. have something. Thank you. And it's not a picture of my dog. Um, it is the Finn, a newly launched product today called the Finn Smart Water Assistant. <laughs> this is interesting because Finn, a couple of years ago, actually oh. launched a water monitoring system with Upinor, which is a plumbing company. Spelled Finn, 600. P-H-Y-N. Oh, yes. P-H-Y-N. And the the fancy one turns off your water valve. And it, it's actually really cool. Ooh. I wanted it, but it's like $699 and it just felt like a plumber has to install it. It's too much. It does that if there's a leak. Right. If it detects a leak, it can auto shut off. Nice. So this new product that was announced today and will be available in September is only $299. Mm. It's It fits under your sink. It monitors all of your water so it can detect leaks that are like a sudden outflow of water from something. It can detect slow leaks. It also can detect on a device by device, faucet by faucet or toilet by toilet basis. Oh, this is Who's incredible. using water. Oh my and gosh. And you can self-install it. And for $300, that sort of leak detection, because a lot of the point leak sensors, they cost between $30 and $40 for like the type of leak sensors you might stick under your sink. And you have to put under... them everywhere. This one is one unit yes. that does it for the whole house. Yes. Wow. So How does it know? I, it, it, algorithms. It, yeah. it um, measures the water flow. It yeah. understands water flow. And it also can detect, actually, this is interesting, because it is measuring water flow. If your pipes start to freeze, it will actually send you an alert because that's going to also impact water flow. This is a really good example of how software can make stuff do pretty amazing things is it ai it is, is it trained how does it how um do, I think yeah it i mean they've trained a they've they trained a model have, right? on yes yeah. but do we call the i mean we can I call, call that ai out. no no if you so if you think about it knowing this unit that's one place in your house could tell how much water is coming out of that faucet how would it know unless you set up a, a system and you and you gave it a lot of data and you said this is what it looks like right Yes. I mean, that that's what they have done. Yes. They yeah, have tons it's rules-based, but the, so that's what I call AI. If it's rules-based, but not because some programmer said, if this, then that, but because a model was created by training. I think that's AI. No, um, okay. AI. I mean, it is, that's how you come up with, that's how you come up with all kinds of algorithms, right? Does AI is, have to learn going forward too, to make it AI? Um, that's a really philosophical question. I don't have the answer to. Okay, Burke <laughs> says it's not AI, so okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm like I don't. I don't yeah, think of it I as think, AI. I just I think, think of it as like sensor. anomaly detection. Yeah, but here's why I call it AI because until recently, this was a hard. This isn't something you could say. Oh, I can write a. I can write the code that will know if that faucet down 100 feet away is leaking. You had to have some much more sophisticated techniques to figure that out. This is where, this is what I mean by software is changing, is going to change things. That's amazing. If it works. Yeah, no, this is, I mean, this is a very cool product. I'm getting yeah. a review unit. Um, you will have to have, so to install it, you have to put it under your kitchen sink and you'll have to install a little sensor on your hot water line and your cold water line. And you need an outlet to plug it in under your sink, which most people will have if they have a garbage disposal or a dishwasher. Here's what they say. Developed over a decade by machine learning researchers at the University of Washington and Belkin. I was Belkin. Finn's oh, yeah, Finn. Yeah. yeah. Finn's proprietary leak detection technology utilizes high-definition ultrasonic sensors mm -hmm. to sample the pressure in your plumbing system 240 times every second. This produces an unparalleled view of the unique signatures of each fixture in your home. So it doesn't put sensors all over your house, right? But it's no, listening, and it knows, oh, that faucet sounds like... And that fossil sounds like, mm. and though it knows that way. Yes. Oh. I call it AI. But you might just call it amazing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it fingerprints your fixtures. When you run a bath, wash your hands, or water your lawn, the pressure in your system changes. Yes. Burke points out, you can put your ear to the pipe. You know somebody's running the water. Yes. But Finn measures these microscopic changes in water pressure to fingerprint the unique pressure profile of each fixture in your home. 
Well, a friend of mine did a business where he did that through all of your electric sockets and everything that was plugged into them. They all have a unique. There's a company that called Sense does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen a box you could put there that says so that. All these things have, yeah. have. They have signatures. Yep. Yeah. yeah they're all That's, unique. Google, Finn I think, is doing something with that. Is installed with the memory of hundreds of thousands of toilet flushes. <laughs> laundry loads and pike leaks from the real homes of beta testers which serve as a baseline for when something's routine or something's wrong from there finn starts to learn how water is uniquely used in your home asking occasional questions to improve accuracy over the time was that you flushing or were you in the hot tub i think that's ai okay that okay, is AI. it's ai okay that thank AI. you that is ai i did You're not right. understand that, that was what it was doing it is definitely ai I win. Yes, because it's it's running a, a model cupcake. and it's updating that model. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You do not win a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this I is, want this, this is for three hundred bucks. This is amazing. I know it's very exciting. Oh, that is amazing. So I'm gonna I'm getting I'm gonna test it out. Okay, I'll let you know how it works. I'll have to create a leak. So if you want it to automatically shut off, Seattle, if you want it to automatically shut off, you need the seven hundred dollar model. But if you don't mind, if you just get a pop up on your phone, you could use the three hundred dollar model. Yes, and if you buy the more expensive model, you need a plumber to come install it because you're going to install it on your yeah. main water line outside your house. You ah. also need Wi-Fi. Will you be the only person in, okay. in the in Seattle that actually has one because it doesn't freeze there? No. Because yeah, that's no, a big no. thing. No, no. I mean, this is in in in, in you know Bedminster. That's huge. Yeah. There's lots of common leaks. I mean, my old house had a bunch of slow leaks. I mean, these oh, really? water oh, leaks are big. Okay. Slow mm -hmm. leaks are an I issue. Mean, my mom found out that she her her studio, which was outside the house, had been leaking gallons a minute for months. Geez. She had a huge yeah, that's, water that's bill. actually really common. Yeah. When I was uh, in college. We uh, left a toilet running in the basement. We didn't know. We were never down there, and the landlady wasn't happy. It's very huh. easy. That can happen easily. You know, you flush it, but it doesn't quite come up, and it continues yep, to yep, run. Yep. I think this is good. This is going to save water. We need water. We need more so water. It's the Internet of Toilets. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The connected hey, toilet hey, is I thought the that was of okay. Oh, Would you like Jeff Jarvis to give us a number? Please. Really not. Please. Um, so I was just in Silicon Valley, and whenever I drive up the 101, I love seeing the Hangar 1. Oh, yeah. Off in the former Isn't office field. Cool? Yeah. It is cool. It's, it's, it's built in. So, so Google has, has controlled this, not quite owned it, but controlled it because they can now land their jets on Moffett Field next to their offices, near their offices. And uh, uh, the Navy was never knew what to do with this huge, huge hangar. And now Google says they have a plan to clean it up. They don't know where it's going to go in. It was built in 1933. The floor alone covers eight acres, can accommodate six American football fields. You could build entire buildings within it. Um, it uh, gets fog near the ceiling at times. Uh, so they're going to do something with this amazing thing. And you see it every day you go by on 101. So I think it, it could be Google's biggest ad. It could be something else. It could be some kind of research center. I don't know what it'll be. But they're going to clean it up and they're going to make it into something. A lot nice. of toxic waste to get rid of. That's not the hangar where uh, Sergey Brin was building his blimps. I don't think so. There, because that's those are all those yeah. old blimp hangers. And he he actually has a company to make bring back blimps. Dirigibles. Dirigibles. Yeah. This time. Is it dirigibles? Yeah. This There's yeah, a distinction between a blimp and a dirigible. I can't remember what it is. But all, this time, let's not use hydrogen, okay? I'm just saying. All blimps. I think are Karsten dirigibles. was going to bring us a bit All of, yeah, blimps. Harvard. All right. All, all Karsten is going to give us. But not all, all dirigibles. A syllogism. Blimps. All blimps are dirigibles, but not all dirigibles our are blimps. blimps. Some are zeppelins. Summer segments. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Harvard <laughs> education in a nutshell. Uh, congratulations to Taylor Lawrence, who is moving from the Atlantic, where she did such great reporting, to the New York Times, where she will continue to do great reporting, including this tweet. You've seen this. We've seen this over and over again. Instagram is about to take over, and all of your stuff will belong to them. 
it's uh, and then so people respond to it with a tweet or an Instagram post. I do not give Instagram or any entities associated with Instagram permission to use my pictures, information, or pictures. With this statement, I give notice to Instagram. It's strictly forbidden. This has been making the rounds again. It's not going to yeah, happen. It's a hoax. Look who fell for it. Judd Apatow, Julianne Moore, Julia Roberts, Deborah Messing, Tara G. P. Henson, Beyonce's mother, Waka Waka Flame, and the Secretary of Energy, Governor oh, Rick geez. Perry. Oh, no. The man in charge of our nuclear weapons program. <laughs> So, uh, just a little um, reminder. <laughs> you don't have to post something that says Instagram doesn't have permission to share my messages or posts. Jeez. You don't have to. That was, That's from 2012, that thing. It just doesn't die. Here's, here's Rick Perry's post. Don't forget, tomorrow starts the new Instagram rule. Don't forget. <laughs> uh, and the Channel 13 news that everybody quotes. Uh, no, that's made up. That's made up. So yeah. somebody somewhere is just chortling. Oh God, yeah. It's a you know. I th I think Karsten has something to show you now. I do. I have a a a new uh and what I'd like to make. A do we need to explain it first, Karsten? Um, this is uh, Karsten's fan video of the week. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a fan uh, a fan found a video well, of a. a a studio crew found a video with Jeff Jarvis <laughs> uh, apparently uh, causing a car crash. Oh, yes, that was good. Um, yes. That was good. Oh, yes. Was good. This yes. one. Okay, uh, the car crash was not good. He wasn't in the car. <laughs> he he wasn't somebody was listening to, to Jeff, Howard Stern. to Howard Stern on Jeff. And that incidental audio was on the video of the of getting him getting rear-ended. Anyway, yes. so we watched that a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And they used this to make fun of Jeff going story. over bridges. Yes. Because they went uh, over a bridge to get there. Uh, last week, uh, we wanted to show a video of uh, Bill Nye talking about Chromebooks. Yes, because he's a big Chromebook fan now, right? Uh, because and he, he did, did a three-minute video. Yes, yeah. um, but I didn't want to show the video because I didn't want us getting taken down. There is YouTube. lately, YouTube's been doing a lot of takedowns uh, at, at other people's behest. I don't think YouTube does it automatically, but it's the content detection. And so, we, and, and it hurts us a lot because when we... You know, a lot of people watch our shows on YouTube, and when it's when the show's taken down, and usually it's a fairly lengthy, like six week takedown, we lose all that revenue. So, so uh, Jeff was good enough to watch the video and narrate for us. I no, I didn't just oh, narrate. No. I I um, dramatized. You, you dramatized it, yes. So instead of watching the video, we're now going to do an audio reenactment. But no, wait, but it gets no. better. But there's now more. Yes. a a a twig listener viewer has created a deep fake video of Jeff Jarvis as Bill Nye. And this, we have the rights to use. This, this, I, I, they could probably take us down because we're using their video. I don't know. It's, this is, this is So this give, is give credit to it's it's worth it. This is worth it. Who did this? Hi. I'm geeky Bill Nye, wait, and wait, trust wait, me, because I need know the video. Oh, God, we, yeah. I'm going to have a George wow. coat on, and things are going to move wow. behind me regularly, wow. and I'm going to talk about, what's the topic here? Oh, Windows, and how slow Windows is. And I'm going to go to this car, this really beat up car, which has a funny Windows license plate on it. And I'm going to say, uh, but I love this car. I don't want to leave, leave this car, even though the car is out of date and it's a mess and it's got tape all over it. Oh, uh, there it goes. The part of it falls off. I put the tape back on. I get in the car. It explodes. Oh, this is Jesus. why you shouldn't be on old things like Windows. You should get a nice. Is this an Chromebook. ad paid for Jeez, by Google? This is a Chromebook ad. Windows oh, this is me. The Chromebook is already booted. I know it's you. Now I'm going to pull on a Hawaiian shirt and there's going to be a scene from Hawaii behind me and I can't remember why look at your hair is actually ruffling I'm trying to teach you but it doesn't matter all I'm going to do is this take is three good you buy a Chromebook and um who did that that was that was Ziv, yeah. Ziv Zoolander Ziv Zoolander that can't taking, be his real name <laughs> <laughs> Ziv Zoolander taking footage from uh uh Twig and putting it on top of a Google Chromebook. But I'm telling you, what's the software? How did he do that? Because the lip sync was good? It, he, it, he apologized on, on YouTube 
for it being his first deep fake. I was very yes, impressed. He says, first deep fake video, so excuse the poor quality. <laughs> also, I didn't have time to run more iterations or ah. edit properly, and I'm not that experienced with editing or premiere. Done for the This Week in Google podcast on the Twit. Twit yeah, he's a so I thought they pulled that deep fake software, but I guess either he has it. You, uh, I'll or... put his, uh, his video in our... Um, in our show notes, oh, here's, so everyone can... Here's on GitHub is a tool it's, called it's Deep Face Lab that is uh, available for download for free that utilizes machine learning to replace faces in video. I wonder if but you he, But that. I don't understand. He got it, I mean, the hair blue, but he also got well, angles the, no, that we the, don't, you the don't the see hair, on the show. The hair blowing... Was Bill was, Nye's hair. Was Bill Nye's hair. Yeah. Right, the, okay. The don't angle, flatter yourself. The angle is, is deep ah, fake software. I do have, by the way... I just want to say, I do have good hair. You do, and it's brighter than Bill Nye's. So your when hair, I go I on to MSNBC, that, that was the not makeup people hair. and the hair people always say, "You have good hair." Yeah, they tell that's, that to everybody. That's their job. I have good hair. I, tell, I may be pink, that. but I have good hair. <laughs> good hair. Yes, Jeff, and I have great skin. That's what they always tell me. Gosh. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I gotta have something, Stacy. Something. I got well, have something real. Like, hey, you write awesome books. Yeah. But seriously, uh, if if any other viewers We will accept deep fakes of all deep fakes, sorts. Send us deep fakes. <laughs> Not, no, I wait, no, 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 stop, no, stop. No. We, will, we will, we will, we will have, no. we will accept no. deep fakes. Don't encourage that. That, that are viewable by uh, normal human beings. <laughs> okay. We will accept deep fakes that are in the spirit of humor and making people education and that are, and are not obvious and or our grandmothers can upsetting. figure it out. Yes. Yes. Send us nice videos, please. Actually, I'm looking. There's a lot of deep fake software out there. So ask yeah. yourself, does it pass the Stacy test? I feel like that's yes. a good test. That's a perfect. This test. is uh, actually, I think, an educational service we're providing to our audience, helping them understand not all video you see is real. Right? This is all fake. Galloway we are not real. Thing. This is the Matrix. The show does not exist. I hate the blue pill. Ladies and gentlemen, we do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 20.30 UTC, right here. Uh, you can watch it if you want live, twit.tv slash live or listen live. You can also join the chat room at irc.twit.tv. But because it's a podcast you can listen at your leisure audio and video versions of the show are available from our website twit.tv slash twig or wherever you get your podcast in fact subscribe we're on youtube we're on pocket cast we're on itunes we're everywhere subscribe and that way you'll get it the minute it's available thank you all for being here we'll see you next time on this week in google bye-bye